This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The New York Yankees faced the Washington Senators at RFK Stadium for opening day on Monday, April 7, 1969. By this point, the Yankees had been an average team for several seasons. Their stars that led them to 12 World Series and 14 seasons throughout the 1950s and 60s were all gone. This game would mark the first New York Yankees season in 50 years that didn't feature either Mickey Mantle, Joe DiMaggio, Lou Gehrig, or Babe Ruth. The Senators had been a below-average team for nearly a decade, having never finished higher than sixth place in every one of the franchise's eight seasons. They entered 1969, however, with some new hope, having hired Ted Williams as their new manager. This audio recording is from the New York Radio Broadcast, featuring announcers Jerry Coleman, Frank Messer, and Phil Rizzuto. We're all set to go here with the starting lineup, and we'll take a look at the Yankees first. We mentioned that there was some uh, discrepancy in the starting lineup for the Yankees. Tommy Tresh has been suffering from a cold, tonsillitis, and somewhat of a sore throat was a questionable starter. He did not play, as you know, yesterday in the final spring exhibition game against the Giants. But he is going to try it today. It's such a spectacularly beautiful day. But Tommy, although he does not feel good, has decided to play. Had he not been able to play, Gene Michael would have taken his spot. The starting lineup for the Yankees on this opening day, 1969, Horace Clark at second base. Jerry Kenny in center field, batting second. Bobby Mercer at third base, hitting third. Roy White batting cleanup, playing left. Joe Pepitone at first base. He's batting fifth. Tommy Trash will hit sixth and play shortstop. Bill Robinson will be in right field, batting seventh. Jake Gibbs will do the catching. He'll hit eighth. And Mel Stottlemyre will pitch and bat ninth. For the Washington Senators, under the guidance of freshman manager Ted Williams, wearing uniform number nine, Dale Unser will start it off. He'll lead off and play center field. Ed Stroud will be in right field, batting second. Frank Howard, who's 44 home runs last year, led the American League in that department and all of baseball. He'll bat third and play left. Mike Epstein will hit in the cleanup spot and play first base. Ken McMullen will play at third base and bat fifth. Hitting sixth and playing second, Tim Cullen. Ed Brinkman will be the shortstop, batting seventh. Paul Casanova will do the catching. He'll hit eighth. And Camilo Pasquale, who won 12 and lost 12 in 1968, will do the pitching, and he'll bat ninth. So there you have it, the starting lineup for this opening day, 1969. And what a spectacular day. We mentioned it before, temperature 70 degrees, beautiful clear skies. It's the kind of a day when you're a ball player, you say, brother... Give them all to me just like this. We mentioned before, this is the beginning of the 100th centennial anniversary for professional baseball. The Cincinnati Red Stockings had the first all-pro team back in 1869. There were professional ball players prior to this, but the 1869 Cincinnati Ball Club was the first all-professional team. To give you a little idea of how things have changed, back in 1869, the entire ball club's salary totaled only $9,500. The rawest rookie in the major leagues today gets $10,000. So there's quite a change. We'll be looking at some new changes this year. The mound's been shortened from 15 inches to 10. The strike zone has been dropped. It was from the shoulders to below the knee. Now it's been raised to just above the knee and lowered to the armpits. And also the 22nd rule will be in effect this year. With no runners on base, the pitcher, after the batter takes his position, must deliver the ball within 20 seconds. I want to point that out. It isn't from the time that the pitcher gets the ball from the catcher. The batter must be in position to hit. And then the umpire will point his finger toward the pitcher. And this, in turn, will dictate that the count is on for 20 seconds. So those three new innovations have been written in the rule books for 1969. As you know, we went through some uh, various experimental phases with pinch runners and pinch batters in spring training, and they were used only during the training session, although they will be tried in some minor leagues throughout the minor league structure of baseball, and possibly in 1970, if they are proved fruitful and are worthy of it, may be entered into the rules. 
Well, we're about ready to go. Horace Clark is the man who will lead off for the Yankees. He'll be facing Camilo Pasquale. But before this gets underway, we would like to remind you this program is brought to you in cooperation with Sports Network and is authorized under rights granted by the New York Yankees solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the New York Yankees is prohibited. A week from tomorrow, incidentally, the Yankees open up at the stadium against these same Washington Senators, and that will give you your first opportunity to see Ted Williams in action as a manager. He was kind of a nervous guy before the game. Manager Ralph House, who's been through this many times before, sat composed and relaxed. But we're about ready to go. Pasquale gets the sign from Casanova, and the 1969 season is underway with a high fastball. It's ball one to Horace Clark. Ken McMullen at third, Ed Brinkman at short, Tim Cullen at second, Mike Epstein at first, the inner defense for the Senators. Pasquale again, the 1-0 delivery. It's hit high in the air into short center field. Dale Unzer drifting in, waiting. He's got it, one away. The season officially underway as Horace Clark flies into short center field. One up, one down. And now the young rookie Jerry Kenny coming on. Kenny batting from the left side, as did Horace Clark. Ken McMullen in tight at third. Kenny will bunt. Pasquale's first pitch is a high curve. It's right in there. Strike one. Camilo Pasquale, who holds the strikeout record for the Washington Senators, struck out 15 batters. That's the club record. That was when he was with the Senators before moving to Minnesota. The one-strike pitch to Kenny is a check swing foul just off to our right and kicks off near the TV booth. Season in the big league. Might mention, too, that this ballpark, formerly known as D.C. Stadium, has been changed to Robert F. Kennedy Stadium. And it is packed, a full house. The two-strike delivery by Pasquale is a curve that's in the dirt, scooped up nicely by Casanova. One ball and two strikes, one away. Ball game just getting underway. Yankees batting top of the first. Dick Hauser in his first official role during the season, coaching at third, and Elston Howard doing the same at first for the Yanks. The one-two pitch is a high curve over the head of Jerry Kenny. Two balls and two strikes. Bobby Mercer waiting in the on-deck circle. A lot of the press and news media from out of town areas here. I saw some from Boston and Baltimore. The 2 2 pitch now is Kenny Waits. Pasquale delivers inside. It misses. It's a 3 and 2 count. And there you hear the fans. They thought they had it. The plate umpire is Jim Honachick. He's the senior umpire in the American League. Hank Soar is at first. Frank Umont at second. Bill Haller at third. And they've got a young rookie, umpire Ron Luciano, who is in left field, sort of working out. They have five umpires today. The payoff pitch. Hit sharply into center. Unzer on the move. He makes a play. That ball was hit. A fine play by Dell Unzer as Jerry Kenny unloaded on a fastball and drilled it into the gap in right center. But Unzer was right there. Two up and two down. Here's Bobby Mercer. Kenny, as you know, spent a year in the service. Mercer is just coming off of a two-year hitch. Bobby won the third base job over Bobby Cox in spring training. Bobby batted higher than any other Yankee this spring, hitting 365. They're only 300 batter in the spring. He's batting number three, waiting. The pitch in there, strike one. Many people tab Bobby Mercer to be one of the big stars in the American League's future. Now time has been called, and Mercer apparently wants to take a look at the baseball. Plate umpire Jim Honachick gives it the once over and says it's okay, and back it goes. With Mercer, Ken McMullen, the third baseman, has moved back a little bit, but is giving Mercer about 10 feet of the foul line. Not moving over into that hole too much. Fairly tight at third. Defense has shifted in the outfield to the right side. Here's the one-strike pitch in the dirt, and did it hit Bobby? I do not believe so. He dropped his bat. 
As a means of explanation, should the ball bounce in the dirt and hit the batter, it's the same as if it hit him on a fly. It doesn't make any difference whether it hits the ground first or not. Had that ball hit Bobby, he would have been awarded first base. It's a one ball, one strike count. Two down, nobody on, top of the first. Always a little extra tickle in your throat on opening day. Here's Pasquale. Curve is low. Two balls, one strike. That's the second time Pasquale has given Jim Hanachek that long look as if to say, where was it? The field bathed completely in sunlight. The 2-1 pitch on the way. Mercer takes a change up outside for 3-1. and one. Roy White, the cleanup batter for the Yankees in the on-deck circle. Mercer with a look at Dick Hauser at third base, wanting to know, shall I take it or shall I swing? Pasquale into the windup. The 3-1 delivery is hit hard to center field. Unzer moving back near the wall, backing up. He's got it. The ball was hit sharply by Mercer as Dell Unzer retired all three Yankees, Clark, Kenny, and Mercer. Three up and three down. And the score after a half inning of play. Yanks nothing. Senators coming to bat. For the benefit of all you fans in the metropolitan area, the Yankees have again established numerous ticket outlets throughout the metropolitan area, making it as convenient as possible for you baseball fans that want to come to Yankee games to purchase tickets. We've got the stadium, of course, by mail or in person. Or you can go in person at Grand Central Station, at the Shraft Restaurant throughout the metropolitan area, or at the 170 branches of the First National City Bank. Or try ticket reservation systems outlets. Or you can go to the New Jersey Automobile Club in Oradell, Patterson, and Jersey City. So there you have it. There are all kinds of places to get tickets. You can drop by Yankee Stadium right now and pick them up. Grand Central's ticket outlet, Shraft Restaurants, First National City Bank, ticket reservation systems outlets, or the Automobile Club in Oradell, Patterson, and Jersey City. Mel Stottlemyre warming up for the Yankees. Mel, who had a banner year last season for the Yanks, winning 21 and losing only 12. Last season, Mel was 4-1 and one against the Senators. Camilo Pasquale, 3-1 and one against the Yankees. So this is quite a battle. These pitchers have been effective against their opposition. Stottlemyre, 4-1 and one in 68 against Washington. Pasquale, 3-1 and one against the Yankees last year. This will be Stottlemyre's fourth opening day assignment. He's got a record of two and one in those assignments. And his only loss was to Camilo Pasquale. That was back on April the 21st, 1965. Leading off for the Senators, Dale Unzer. He'll be followed by Ed Stroud. And then by the big guy, Frank Howard, batting in the number three spot. Coaching. For the Senators, Nellie Fox at first base, Wayne Twilliger at third. Mercer's moved in at tight at third base. Unzer will bunny chokes up quite a bit from the left side, waiting. Stottlemyre's first delivery is right down the middle, strike one. He zipped that in there with a little extra. Outfield defense is shading Unzer to the opposite field. Kenny has moved into the gap in left center. White guarding the line in left. Robinson giving a big slice of the right field line to Unzer. Unzer started a bunt and takes one outside. One ball, one strike. The field in perfect condition. You walked around it out there. It's absolutely perfect. The 1 1 pitch done, there by Stottlemyre. Hit sharply up the middle. It's in there for a single. Oh, well, the first batter for the Senators, Dell Unzer, lines a single sharply up the middle, and that is the first hit for the 1969 baseball season anywhere. The Giants. And the Braves play in Atlanta tonight. And Cincinnati and the Dodgers are playing in Cincinnati. Ed Stroud is stepping in. Unzer at first. Stroud, a left-hand hitter waiting. As Stottlemyre sets, delivers. Outside corner, strike one. Beautiful fastball. Just ticked the corner. Yankee infield, Tresh at short, Clark at second, very tight, double play depth. Stroud can run and so can Unzer at first. 
Stottlemyre coming into a set position. Mel ready. Kicks. Delivers. There's a chopper over Stottlemyre's head. Clark up with it. Has to go to first base. And getting by him down to second is Del Unzer. Horace Clark had to come in front of Unzer. And the only play he had was at first base. Well, you hear the hand for the big guy. Frank Oliver Hondo Howard. Who can forget? Ten home runs in 20 times at bat spread over six games last year. Captured the headlines and the fancy of baseball fans everywhere. Big guy held out a lot and he is not in top shape at the moment. Came in very late. But he got that big $100,000. Stottlemyre's first delivery to Howard. A ground ball. Mercer to his left. He has it. It's going to be a long throw. It's in the dirt. A nice pickup by Pepitone. Bobby Mercer was playing deep for Howard. Went almost to the shortstop position. Threw the ball low and Pepitone scooped it out. Holding at second base, Del Unzer. Fine play by Bobby Mercer. You can bet that these youngsters like Mercer and Kenny are going to be a little tight today. And even the veterans tighten up on days like this. Mike Epstein, who had a disappointing season last year, has never really hit the peaks expected of him as stepping in right now. Unzer at second. Stottlemyre kicks, delivers, and Epstein takes a slider in there, strike one. Epstein batted 234 last year, 13 home runs and only 33 RBIs. Hits from the left side. He's waiting. Stottlemyre kicks again and delivers this one low. One ball and one strike. Two outs. No score. We're in the last of the first inning. Del Unzer, who has the only hit in the ball game, is on at second base. A leadoff single by Unzer. He went to second on the ground out by Stroud and held when Frank Howard bounced out to Bobby Mercer. President Richard Nixon watching the action. Second time he's thrown out the first ball, once as a vice president in 59. All right, Stottlemyre sets the 1-1 one -one delivery, is outside Epstein, two balls and one strike. Stottlemyre had his usual fine spring in exhibition games at an earned run average of 0.45. He's ready again. Now steps off the rubber and apparently wants to get the sign changed. Remember the 22nd rule of delivery does not stand with runners on base. Mel Stoudemire again is having trouble with Gibbs getting together on the sign and steps off once more. And the fans are rabid here in these parts. When they come out, they have a lot to say. We got a good crowd today. Packed house, standing room only. The pitch by Mel is just outside. Three balls and one strike to Mike Epstein. On deck, Ken McMullen, another holdout artist this spring. Stottlemyre once again, the 3-1 delivery to Epstein on the way. It's in there. A full count. Outfield very deep with Epstein up there. He's the youngster who is a fullback for the football team at the University of California. Stands deep in the box. Chokes up just a little bit. Payoff pitch coming up. Stottlemyre ready. Here it is. And Epstein takes a curve inside for ball four. A base on balls to Mike Epstein. The Senators have runners at first and second with two down. The batter now, third baseman Ken McMullen. This ought to be a rather interesting year for baseball fans everywhere. Ted Williams, no question that he's the finest hitter in our generation, possibly of all time. And he's got a lot of young ballplayers with promise like McMullen, Epstein, Casanova, who are not hitting up to par. So it'll be interesting to see just exactly what he can do and how much he can do with these men. Ken McMullen, one of those youngsters who batted only 248 last year, waiting takes a slider outside for ball one as Stottlemyre has lost that plate momentarily. 
the Yankees will rely heavily on their fine pitching of Stottlemyre, Bonson, Peterson, Burback, Kekic, Talbot, right down the line. The 1-0 pitch. McMullen takes it low. Two balls, no strikes. Yankee infield is back and deep. Runners at first and second for the Senators. No score, last of the first. The flags here at Robert F. Kennedy Stadium at half-mast in honor of President Dwight David Eisenhower. The 2-0 pitch in there this time for a strike, a curveball. Two balls, one strike. Stottlemyre checking Gibbs. McMullen waiting. Mel delivers. And there's a half swing call, strike two. Two and two. This is the big pitch for Mel. He'd like to get this one over. When you go to three and two, the runners will be moving. It makes it tough for the fielders. And you only have one play. That's at first. The 2 2 delivery. Check swing foul back at the screen. The count holds two balls and two strikes. The stadium here in Washington, with all the bunting out, symbol of the American flag hanging off the upper deck and along the base of the field. Quite an impressive sight. This uh, ballpark and the stands are completely circular with the upper deck circling the entire playing field. Stottlemyre ready again. 2-2 delivery coming up. Here it is, McMullen takes it inside three and two, and that's the one that Mel did not want. The runners will be going now. It's three balls, two strikes, two down. Epstein will move off of first. Unzer will be going from second. The play now will have to go to first. Bobby Mercer deep at third. Tresh deep at short. Clark the same at second. Pepitone back at first. The runners go. There's a ground ball. One hopper back to Stottlemyre. Mel flips over to Pepitone and the side is retired. So Stottlemyre, who ran into some hot water in the first inning, gets out of it. No runs, a base hit, two left. And the score after one full inning of play, the Yanks nothing, Washington nothing. Say, for all you Yankee fans who shepherd the family finances, we've got some good news for you. The Yankees have a new sponsor this year. Yes, sir, it's First National City Bank. During the season, we'll be bringing you a lot of useful new ideas on managing your money, on saving it, on keeping it safe while traveling, and on how to get more when you need it. You know, it's true that First National City has so many services now, it really is the only bank that you and your family ever need. For instance, our new sponsor even makes it easier for you to order tickets to Yankee games. At any of their 170 branches around the New York area, you can charge them on First National City's Master Charge Card. What? You don't have one yet? Well, why not pick up a free application at any branch? It's the Worldwide Everything Card, the charge card that's good for just about everything at more places around town than any other card. And it's the card you can use at any place all the way across the country and around the world. So you see, there are a lot of reasons to say, welcome, First National City. It's nice to have you around. Well, there's quite a sign on the board out there as we get ready for the second inning, and it says, Hello, Mickey Mantle, wherever you are. I don't know that Mickey's in the stands. We didn't see him around. But I'm sure that on today, of all days, Mickey will miss not being here as much as any other day this season. Camilo Pasquale. He'll face Roy White, Joe Pepitone, and Tommy Tresh. Camilo Pasquale, who's third on the all-time strikeout list for active pitchers. He's into the windup. Big curve over the head of Roy White for ball one. White, a switch hitter, batting from the left side. In fact, Clark, Kenny, Mercer, White, Pepitone, Tresh will all go up there from the left side. Swing and a miss by Roy White. One ball and one strike. Roy, as you recall, did not have the benefit of a complete spring training. It wasn't until March 20th that he was clear of his Army duty. Pasquale, the 1-1 pitch. Fastball is high. Two balls and one strike. Camilo Pasquale is 20 and 26 lifetime against the Yankees. Pasquale ready again. The 2-1 delivery. White waiting. Fouls it off on the right side. 
Two balls, two strikes. Now Pasquale kicking at the rubber. Camilo Pasquale in his career before today, of course, has struck out 2,102 batters. The 2-2 pitch to White. Curve is in there. The low, pardon me, three balls and two strikes. Three and two the count. Roy White taking a breaking pitch just below the knees. Now the payoff pitch coming up. White waiting. Pasquale delivers. Outside, ball four, and Roy White, who can run those bases, moves down to first, a leadoff base on balls. First Yankee base runner, and that'll bring up Joe Pepitone. Paul Casanova yelling something to Pasquale, pointing to the infielders, Ed Brinkman at short, Tim Cullen at second. Roy White, who can go down that line or steal a base. On at first. Pepitone stepping in. Nobody out. Outfield shifted to the right. Pepitone waiting. The pitch is on the ground foul past Ellie Howard down the right side. Last year, Roy White stole 20 bases. And he tied Horace Clark for the team lead in that department. Of course, it's Youth and Speed, 1969 edition of the New York Yankees. Pepitone, one of the veteran ball players. He's waiting as Pasquale gets a sign from Casanova. There goes White. The pitch is taken. Casanova's throw is not in time, and White steals his first base. Ed Brinkman thought he had him. But Roy White gave a beautiful fadeaway slide to the inside of the bag. Not many men can do that. Usually they go the other way. And he beat the tag. So Roy White is on at second base. And while we're waiting for the dust to clear, let's pause for station identification. The WHN weather word for this afternoon, sunny and quite mild, the high in the mid-60s. Tonight, fair and mild, low in the mid-40s. Right now, 64 degrees. WHN, 1050, New York. White at second, nobody out. Pepitone the hitter, one ball and one strike. And now he wants to pull the ball to advance White to third. And on that, Pasquale, who's been around a few years, as we mentioned, he's starting his 16th year as a pitcher, has a little conference with his catcher, Casanova. He'd like to get Pepitone to hit to the left side so White would not be able to advance. Any ground ball to the right side to Cullen at second or Epstein at first will move White over to third with only one out. On the other hand, Pepitone might hit something where nobody's standing. There's a curve that's low and inside. Two balls and one strike. Joe Pepitone. He's being deliberate, stepping into the box. Camilo Pasquale taking plenty of time. The Yankees on their first scoring threat of 1969 with White at second. Here's the pitch to Pepe. Hit high in the air into center field. Roy White will not tag up. He cannot go anyplace. And Camilo Pasquale did what he wanted to do. He held Roy White at second base as Pepitone flies to center. There have been four outs in this ball game, and Del Unzer has made all of them. Clark flied to center, Kenny lined to center, Mercer flied to center, and now Pepitone has flied to center. White holding at second, and that'll bring up Tommy Tresh, who is a just a probable starter before the game got underway. And he said that he wanted to play. It was opening day. You must remember the Yankees are off tomorrow, and then they do not play until Wednesday night. So Tommy, after this game, can go home and go to bed for almost two days. Tresh, as they say, playing on sheer guts alone. He doesn't feel good, but he's going to play. There goes White for third. The throw is not in time, and White has stolen second and third. Tresh took the ball. It was outside. It's ball one on Tommy Tresh as Roy White got a blazing jump. No chance for a play. The ball kicked away from McMullen, but even had it been a good throw, White was there. How do you like that? Two stolen bases. And Roy White did what Pepitone couldn't do. He got to third base anyway.
Tommy Tresh now with the infield in. Now Brinkman, the shortstop, has moved into a halfway position. Cullen moves back a little bit. Pasquale taking his lineup delivers, and the ball is sliced off into the Yankee dugout from the bat of Tommy Tresh. One ball and one strike. <laughs> I see a man with a hat on and a business suit who brought a glove with him. He's standing right at the railing, ready to catch anything that comes his way. I've got to say, there's a baseball fan. We used to call him baseball nuts or baseball joes, but he brought his glove with him. People sitting here in their shirt sleeves, those that are in the sun, beautiful day. Can't get over it, 70 degrees. The 1-1 pitch as Tresh waits. Here it comes. Sharply hit for a base hit, and the Yankees lead one to nothing as White comes across. Tommy Tresh lined a sharp single between Epstein and Cullen into right field, and the Yankees take the lead one nothing. So Tommy Tresh off to a good start in his first at-bat. And isn't it always the way Tommy feels miserable and Eddie walks up there and stroked a curveball solidly into right field and the Yankees lead 1-0. Bill Robinson stepping in. Tresh at first. One away. Top of the second. Yankees leading 1-0. Camilo Pasquale getting the sign from Paul Casanova. Throws to first. Tresh back in plenty of time. Senators, they're dug out on the right side. Yankees on the left side. There's a high, tight, fast ball. It misses to Robinson. Ball one. Describe that a little more accurately. The Yankees on the third base side. The Senators on the first base side. Pasquale. Ready again. Robinson waits. Here's the pitch. Hard hit ball to McMullen. Bobbles it at third again. Then throws to second in time to get Tresh. Ken McMullen bobbled the ball twice. But he did manage to pick it up in time to get Tommy Tresh at second base. The ball was hit so sharply that McMullen had a chance to kick it around a while and still get Tommy. Robinson holds that first base on the force. And that'll bring up Jake Gibbs with two outs. Pasquale running into trouble here in the second inning. Stottlemyre had a bad inning in the first with a hit and a walk, a couple of men getting on, but managed to survive without giving up a run. Bill Robinson, another one of the young speedy Yankees, on at first. The pitch to Gibbs is right in there, strike one. Yankees, as we mentioned, off tomorrow. They play again Wednesday night, and it'll be Stan Bonson, the Yankees rookie of the year last season, going up against the young rookie, at least in age, Joe Coleman for the Senators. He's not a full-fledged rookie, but he seems to be. He's only 22 years old. The one-strike pitch coming up to Gibbs as Robinson breaks. The ball is in the dirt, and Bill will have himself a stolen base. Third stolen base this inning. Casanova had no control over this one. That ball bounced in the dirt, and the best he could do was block it. And we might say also in defense of Casanova, the Yankee runners are getting their jumps on Pasquale, not on the catcher. There isn't much that Casanova can do, even though he's got one of the finest arms in baseball to throw these men out because they are really moving, and they've got big leads by the time Casanova ever gets around to getting the ball. So whoever is helping them, they're reading Pasquale just right and getting good jumps. Robinson now at second base. Gibbs waiting. One ball, one strike, two down. Here's the pitch to Jake. He hits one sharply into left field. It drops in for a base hit. Here comes Robinson, and the Yankees are out in front two to nothing as Jake stuck out his bat and lined a single to left. The Yankees and the stolen base. We talked about youth and speed, and never was it pointed up more then in this inning, with White stealing second and third and scoring on a hit by Tresh, Robinson stealing second and scoring on a single by Gibbs. Yankees move out in front two to nothing. Now Mel Stottlemyre. 
Stottlemyre, the sixth batter for the Yankees in this inning. Two down, Gibbs at first. If you recall last season, Jake stole more bases than any catcher than baseball. I believe that number was eight, if I'm not mistaken. Nine. We'll give him one more. Jake stole nine bases last year. He's on at first as Pasquale sets and delivers, and Stottlemyre is backed off the plate. Ball won the count. Camilo Pasquale, whose lifetime Major League record is 170 wins, 163 losses. He sets. Stottlemyre fouls one on the left side, out of play. It was right here in this ballpark that Mel had five for five one afternoon, his best hitting day ever. Camilo Pasquale, a veteran right-hander. Had some serious arm problems a few years ago, but has overcome it. Kicks and delivers a curve over the head of Stottlemyre. The count now, two balls and one strike with two outs. Two runs across. The Yankees are leading by that score, two to nothing. Top of the second, and Jake Gibbs at first. Defense straight away for Stottlemyre. Not too deep either in the infield or the outfield. Mel drills one hard to left. Frank Howard backing up one hand and that ball was really hit. Stottlemyer never hit a ball any harder, but the big guy backed up and one-handed it to take a possible extra base hit away from Mel. For the Yankees, two runs on two base hits, one man left. Three stolen bases in that inning for the Yankees. And the score after an inning and a half, it's the Yankees two and the Senators nothing. Well, we'd like to remind you once again about the 170 new Yankee ticket outlets for you baseball fans in the greater New York area this season. They're at all the branches of the First National City Bank. Choice seats to any Yankee home game can be purchased at a First National City Bank near you. But that's not all. Tickets can be charged on First National's Master Charge, the worldwide everything card, at the bank or right at Yankee Stadium. Now, how's that for convenience? Why don't you drop into your nearest First National City Bank for your Yankee tickets? And don't forget, what's coming up a week from tomorrow? Opening day at Yankee Stadium. The Washington Senators will be the Yankee opponents, and they'll be there on Wednesday and Thursday. And then that great big weekend date with a world champion Detroit Tigers, a Ladies' Day, Saturday, April the 19th, and a big doubleheader, the first one of the year, April the 20th on Sunday, also against the Detroit Tigers. How about that for a first week of baseball? Mel Stottlemyre has now got himself a little cushion out there. It's the Yankees two and the Senators nothing. And he'll be going up against Tim Cullen, Ed Brinkman, and Paul Casanova in the bottom of the second. Tim Cullen, good defensive second baseman, has never been too much in the hitting department. Cullen from the right side waiting as Stottlemyre delivers a slider that misses for ball one. Cullen wearing uniform number one. He's waiting. The 1-0 pitch. They chop her to third. Bobby Mercer has this one easily. He flips over to Pepitone. It's one away. That's the kind of action you'd like to see when Mel Stottlemyre is out there. When those ball players are hitting that ball on the ground, then he's sharp. That sinker is moving. One away, and the batter now is Ed Brinkman. This is another of the youngsters that manager Ted Williams is concentrating on. Brinkman batted only 187 last year. Six feet, 170 pounds, and he has choked up way off the end of that bat. Takes a strike right in there. Brinkman now is going into the pitch more. He's choking way up. Good six or seven inches off the handle. You'd have to see it to believe it. Has changed completely. He's waiting. Stottlemyre delivers. Brinkman takes low and outside. One ball, one strike. Nothing but ones out there. Ball one, strike one, one out. Brinkman with uniform number 11. Yankees are leading 2 nothing. last of the second. Stottlemyre ready. The 1-1 pitch fouled off on the left side, and that'll dribble into the Yankee dugout. The outfield has pulled in quite a bit with Brinkman up there.
Brinkman came to the Senators way back in 1962. He's waiting. The pitch by Stoudemire swung on a miss. Strike three. Got him on a curve. First strike out of the ball game for either pitcher. Two away. And the batter now is Paul Casanova. And here is another of Ted Williams' youngsters that he'd like to convert into a better hitter. Last year, Casanova batted only 196. Spent part of the year at Buffalo. Paul had some problems with the front office and that uh, there was a temperament thing going, sort of a personality clash. Fine defensive catcher. Waiting. Takes a strike right in there. No balls, one strike, two outs, nobody on. Casanova batting in the number eight spot. Casanova slightly close stance from the right side waiting. Stottlemyre delivers a one hopper and Mel has it. He flips over to Pepitone and Mel gets out of it easily. Three up and three down. The score after two full innings of play. The Yankees two runs on two hits. Senators no runs and one hit. And now more thank yous from Peels for the folks who've tried their real draft beer. Henry Becker of Long Island says, I've found Peel's Real Draft to be the smoothest, most satisfying beer on the American market. Thank you very, very, very much. Urban Melton of the Bronx says, I just want to tell you that Peel's is one of the greatest beers that I've tried. It's a draft beer. It's a great beer. Thank you very, 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 very much. Francis Jambroni of Lindenhurst says, We always have Peel's in the house. It's nice and smooth. It's delicious. We enjoy it. Thank you very much, thank you very, 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 very much. Why have so many people been convinced that our beer is better than their beer? We think it's simple. Peel's has real draft beer in a can, and that's what makes the difference. Do us a favor, try Peel's Real Draft, and when you're convinced, let us know, so we can say to you... I sure Thank you very much. Camilo Pasquale will go up against the Yankees in the top of the third inning, and he'll be going up against the top of the batting order, Horace Clark, Jerry Kenny, and Bobby Mercer, all three of whom in the first inning fly out to the center fielder, Del Unzer. If you just tuned in, the Yankees got a couple of runs in the top of the second when White walked, stole second and third, and scored on Tommy Tresh's single. Bill Robinson forced Tresh at second, but then Bill stole second base and came home on Jake Gibbs, line single to left. So the Yankees are out in front. Two to nothing. We we'll mention again, don't forget April 15th, opening day at Yankee Stadium with Ted Williams and the Senators going up against the Yankees. We'll have a repeat of this opening day here in Washington, and I hope we have a repeat of the weather. 70 degrees down here, spectacular day. Horace Clark, 0 for 1, stepping in there from the left side, a switch hitter. Pasquale, ready. Fires. There's a chopper to first. Epstein will make this one all by himself and does. One away. Now Jerry Kenny is taking his time as he walks up there, giving Stottlemyre a little rest. Ball players do this. In other words, Kenny doesn't want to be in there to be a second out quickly if he makes out. You hardly give your pitcher a chance to get his breath this way by taking just a little time. Then you give Mel Stottlemyre a little more time to breathe. Jerry Kenny, who lined the center field in the first inning, hit the ball sharply, but right to Del Unzer is up there and takes a big curveball high for ball one. Camilo Pasquale changing speeds a lot. Used to be strictly a fastball and sharp curveball pitcher. Now he's throwing that big balloon up there every now and then. He's ready. The 1-0 pitch to Kenny. Hit hard to right field. I mean real hard. Way back there. It's gone. Jerry Kenny comes up with a first Yankee home run of 1969. And he hit that. Hoo-wee. The Yankees out in front by three. Kenny did not have an outstanding spring, but in these last two exhibition games, he has really come to life. Jerry batted only 217. So that ball jumped out of here. 
That was Kenny's second big league home run as Bobby Mercer steps in. There's a slow curve outside ball one. And then you can hear the fans buzzing on that. That ball shot out of here. No wind to help it. It just boomed out. The 1-0 pitch to Mercer. Change up is outside. Two balls, no strikes. Yankees with two in the second, one so far in the third, lead three to nothing. The third base hit off Camilo Pasquale. It was a big one. Bobby Mercer, left-hand hitter, also waiting. Pasquale ready. The 2-0 delivery is in there. Two balls, one strike. Manager Ralph Houck has sent only two right-hand hitters into the lineup against Pasquale, Bill Robinson and Stottlemyre. Everybody else hitting from the left side. Tresh, White, and Clark switch hitters. Mercer hits a high fly to right field. This could go if it's fair. It's way back there, and it is a home run. Bobby Mercer into the upper deck. to back home runs by the two youngsters that the Yankees have been touting all spring and the Yankees now have a four to nothing lead that is Bobby Mercer's second major league home run and the bullpen goes into action that ball went into the upper deck just fair not more than two feet first base umpire Hank Soar running down the line made the call Bob Humphreys, right-hander, warming up for the Senators as Roy White steps up. White walked, stole second and third, and scored a run. Fastball is outside, ball one. Camilo Pasquale getting tattooed by back-to-back -back homers by Kenny and Mercer. You can hear the fans buzzing. This was supposed to have been a running ball, <laughs> but they showed some punts that time. White takes outside, two balls, no strikes. And now Sid Hudson is coming out of the senator dug out to have a chat with the pitcher Camilo Pasquale I think a lot of people were sitting here waiting and hoping it would be Ted Williams we'll see just how manager Williams handles this situation when he takes a pitcher out many managers will send the coach out to talk to the pitcher the first go around but on the second time when they want him out they'll go themselves let's see what Ted does if it should come to that Yankees leading four to nothing, opening day, 1969. Roy White, switch hitter from the left side, is waiting. Two balls, no strikes, one out, two runs across. Pasquale into the windup, fires the slider that makes it, strike one. Two balls, one strike. The 2-1 pitch by Pasquale. White takes this one low. Three balls and a strike. Camilo is using that fastball and then changing up. And when he changes up, it's very marked. He's pulling the string on both his curve and his fastball. 3-1 delivery. Here it comes. White waiting. Hits the chopper to second. Cullen on the big hop. Flips in time to Epstein. Two down. Now Joe Pepitone who flied to center field in the second, steps up. Kenny, Mercer, Tresh, and Gibbs have all driven in runs. Kenny and Mercer with back-to-back -back homers. Pepitone waiting. Two out, nobody on. Curve drops in there, strike one. looking for big things here in the nation's capital from the new senators the one strike pitch Pepe takes this for strike two they've got these little stickers that they were handing out all over the place it's a brand new ball game and from the looks of things there are about 44 or 5 thousand people who think so big crowd the two-strike pitch now to Pepitone. It's in the dirt. One ball and two strikes.
Pasquale taking his time. Pepitone standing there swinging the bat. We're ready to go. Here's the 1-2 delivery by Pasquale, and Pepitone takes this one low. It's in the dirt. It's 2-2. Two and two. Pasquale has been extremely erratic with his breaking pitches. He's thrown them in the dirt, over the heads of the hitters, and occasionally, and I mean just that, he hasn't had too many strikes with it, he'll get one over the plate, but he's been very high and very low with his breaking stuff. Pasquale ready again. Casanova flashes the sign. Pepitone waiting. The 2-2 delivery. Curve over Pepitone's head, and there's an example of this erraticness uh, Pasquale has been down and up and all over the place. Three balls and two strikes. Tommy Tresh on deck. Payoff pitch on the way. Curve ball hit sharply in the gap in right center. Unzer after it. Can't get it. Gets by him. Pepitone's going to go for two and holds on at second base with a double. Well, the Yankees, with two home runs and a double, have a runner at second base, two down, and here comes Sid Hudson once again, and that'll be all for Camilo Pasquale. Sid Hudson, the ex-right-hand pitcher for the Senators of many years ago, now the pitching coach for Washington, will be the man who will make the pitching changes. And Bob Humphreys, you may have heard it in the background, will be coming on to take up the pitching charge for Pasquale. Camilo Pasquale gave up five hits and four runs so far. Should Pepitone score, he will be charged to Pasquale. He walked only one batter and did not strike out a man. And that's uh, rather strange in that strikeout department. As we mentioned before, Camilo Pasquale is third on the all-time list with 2,102 strikeouts. He's behind Jim Bunning, who pitches for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Bunning has 2,493. And Don Drysdale of the Los Angeles Dodgers has 2,462. So Pasquale did not have a strikeout and had a rather rough afternoon, particularly in the second and third innings. Incidentally, the Yankees have again provided special days for their young fans this season. You know about those. The first one is going to be Cap Day, and that'll be Saturday afternoon, May the 3rd, against the Baltimore Orioles. And there you hear the hand for Camilo Pasquale as he leaves the field. Then it's Ball Day on Sunday afternoon, May 25th, for a doubleheader against the Twins. Finally, the biggest of them all, Bat Day on Sunday afternoon, June 15th, against the brand-new Seattle Pilots. All youngsters 14 years of age or under, accompanied by an adult, receive a free cap ball or bat at whichever game he attends. Don't forget, bat day will be dad's day as well. So why not get an early start on baseball's biggest fun days and pick up your tickets now? $4 box seats and two seventy-five reserve seats can be ordered by mail or in person at the stadium or in person at any Yankee ticket outlet in the metropolitan area. Bob Humphreys has come on to take up the pitching chores from Camilo Pasquale. Pasquale pitched two and two-thirds innings. And as we've said, gave up five hits, and so far, four runs, and could be charged with a fifth. William Robert Humphreys, uniform number 23. He's not too big, 5'10", 170 pounds. Bounced around a lot. Began his pro career back in 1958. He's been with the St. Louis Cardinals, Chicago Cubs, the Washington Senators. Also the Detroit Tigers. Well, he has uh, made the rounds, made many minor league clubs. Last year, Humphreys had a record of five and seven. Pitched in 56 ball games. So the right-hander facing Tommy Tresh, who singled in the first Yankee run on the second inning. Pepitone a second. The first pitch to Tommy. It's a knuckleball. Swung on a miss. Strike one. Humphreys who has developed a knuckleball he started last year has picked up in his pitching precision quite a bit he didn't have that knuckleball once he got it he got better all right Humphrey's ready again the one strike delivery another knuckleball hit high to right field waiting for it is Ed Stroud waiting the ball comes down and Stroud makes the play 
So the Yankees are out of there, but they come up with two runs on two hits. The home runs by Kenny and uh, make that three hits. Home run by Kenny Mercer and a double by Pepitone. No Senator errors. One man left. The score after two and a half. It's the Yankees four and Washington nothing. And now four little words from Peels, the draft beer people. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very, very much. Edward Schumann of Plainview, Long Island says, I've never enjoyed a beer as much as Peel's. This is the finest beer any man could buy. Thank you very, very, very much. Barry Broth of Brooklyn says, I agree with the other people in your commercials. Peel's Real Draft is the greatest. It tastes like it came out of a keg. Thank you very, very, very much. Rose Calvert of Manhattan says, I enjoy Peel's Real Draft better than any beer I've ever tasted. It seems to have real body. I enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thank you very, 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 very much. In hundreds of towns, thousands of people are finding that our beer is better than their beer. Why? We think it's simple. Peel's has real draft beer in a can, and that's what makes the difference. To all of you who've switched to Peel's, whoever you are, wherever you are, we say... Thank you very Thank you very much. All set to go here in the bottom of the third inning with the Yankees leading four to nothing. Mel Stottlemyre and Camilo Pasquale, the starting pitchers. Pasquale has been removed. Stottlemyre still in there. And he's going up against the man who took over for Pasquale, Bob Humphreys, who takes a curve high for ball one. It'll be Humphreys and then the leadoff man, Unzer and Stroud. Humphreys waiting as Stottlemyre fires in there. One ball, one strike. Mel ready once again. Delivers a check swing foul. One ball and two strikes. Plate umpire Jim Honachek. Hank Soar at first. Frank Umont second. Bill Haller at third. And then we've got a young rookie, Ron Luciano who is working out along the left field line, getting his feet wet. Here's the one-two pitch, Humphreys. Bouncer toward third. Mercer up with it. Plenty of time. Fires to Pepitone. One away. Humphreys actually lost his bat as he swung at the ball. And while we wait for the leadoff man, Unzer, to come up there, let's pause for station identification. The WHN weather word, sunny and mild this afternoon, high in the 60s. Right now it's 65 degrees. This is WHN 1050, New York. Dell Unzer, who got the first base hit of the season, a sharp single to center field in the bottom of the first, is stepping up against Stottlemyre. Takes one right in there for strike one. Yanks leading four to nothing. Mel ready again. Fouled at the plate by Unzer. No balls and two strikes. Now Stottlemyre hitching up his pants a little bit. Defense in tight. Unzer can run. He placed behind Bonson in Rookie of the Year honors last year. He's waiting. The pitch by Mel is sliced sharply to left. White coming in. Can't get it. It gets by him. It took a crazy bounce. Unzer on his way to second, and he holds on with a double. That ball hit in front of Roy White and then kicked behind him, and White just ran right by it and couldn't hold on to it. So Unzer is now two for two, a single and a double. And he has both Senator base hits. Yankees out in front, 4 nothing. last half of the third. Here's Ed Stroud, who bounced to second in the first inning. Stroud, left-hand hitter. He had one day against the Yankees last season where he had two triples and two doubles. Hits this one into short left field, Roy White. Coming on, he got it, a one-handed catch, a rolling catch as White actually lost the ball momentarily, went back a few steps, and then had to recover, and he did with a diving, rolling catch and gets a fine hand from the fans. Oh, boy. Left 
Two down, and here's Frank Howard. Howard, that big six foot seven inch giant, 260 pounds, waiting. High fly, right field. Bill Robinson drifting in. Glasses down. Fighting the sun, but he's got it. Well, Stottlemyre gets out of it. No runs on a hit and one left. And the score after three full innings of play, it's the Yankees. Four runs on five hits. The Senators, no runs on two hits. And now, let's listen to Phil Rizzuto with an interesting question for manager Ralph Howe. Well, Ralph, how about the division that the Yankees are in? It's uh, definitely the tougher of the two divisions, and... Uh, I think that it makes uh, the team up for more ball games. They won't be uh, relaxed too much. Phil, I feel the same way. I, I think most people recognize the fact that we are in the division with Detroit and Baltimore and Boston and Cleveland. And uh, I don't think this is going to hurt us too much. We, it might, we may not win quite as many games as you would have in the other division, but uh, I think the club will always be up. I, I think we realize that we've got the toughest teams to beat. And I think the club will stay up, and, and we're really going into this thing with the idea that we think we can take it all. Now, I know that's a little far-fetched in some points, but with the pitching we have, and if these young players can just keep coming, and if we get off right, where they can get the confidence and know they can win, I, I, it's just hard to say what will happen, and we might really shake some people up. Well, it's always hard to say just what will happen, Ralph, and uh, what's happened in this ball game? a 4 to nothing Yankee lead. Back-to-back -back home runs by Jerry Kenny and Bobby Mercer. It wasn't until July 7th last year that the Yankees came up with back-to-back -back home runs in a ball game. I believe that was uh, White and Costco against Baltimore at Yankee Stadium. Jerry Coleman's moved over to television to join Phil Rizzuto. I'm Frank Messer sitting in with you right now. And Bill Robinson is set to lead off as we go to the top half of the fourth inning here at Robert F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium. Robbie reached on a fielder's choice his first time up. Humphrey's first pitch to him bounces about three feet in front of the plate, and Casanova goes out toward the mound to talk to his right-hander. Robinson, after reaching on a fielder's choice, stole second, came in to score on Jake Gibbs' base hit to left field. That was run number two for the Yankees. Next pitch to Robinson. Over but low. Bounces away from Casanova. Two balls and no strikes now to Bill. Jake Gibbs on deck and then Mel Stottlemyre. Oh, what a beautiful day for baseball here in Washington. And we understand a beautiful day in the New York area. 2 nothing pitch coming to the right-hand hitting Bill Robinson. Inside, ball three. Yes, sir, it's days like this that makes you want to see baseball, and Yankee fans will have their first opportunity a week from tomorrow. It'll be the Senators. 3-0 pitch from Humphreys. Over but low, ball four, and Robinson is on on four pitches. Second walk given up by Washington pitching, the first by Humphreys, and here comes Jake Gibbs. Jake slashed a single to left field his first time up and drove in a run with it. Yankee runs have been knocked in by Tresh, Gibbs, Kenny, and Mercer. The latter two on home runs. With Mercer's going to the upper deck in right field. Epstein holding against Bill Robinson. The look over there by Humphreys. The kick, the pitch, Robinson goes. There's a high fly ball down the right side. Racing for it, the right fielder and the second baseman, and it is caught. And now dropped by the second baseman. It's a fair ball. The throw to second base, not in time to get Bill Robinson. Cullen... Caught it and dropped it. Umpire Hank Soar says it was in fair territory, and now Cullen is putting up quite a beef. Cullen putting up quite a beef, and Ted Williams is on the field. Ted Williams has come out to protest the call by Hank Soar. An error is charged to Cullen on the play, and Ted Williams has taken the beef right now to Hank Soar. And he, they are joined out there by the plate umpire, Jim Honochik. It's an error. Bill Robinson had a good break towards second. Gibbs popped it up in a shallow right down the right field foul line. Robinson stopped halfway. And when 
Cullen got to the ball. Robinson raced back to first. But no sooner had he got back to the bag than Cullen dropped the ball in fair territory. Robinson reversed his field, raced to second base, and gives his on on an error charge to Cullen. Williams gives up the argument and goes back into the Senator dugout. Now the first error of the 1969 baseball season. It's charged to Tim Cullen, the second baseman. Here is Stottlemyre lined out to Frank Howard in left field. He's up there to bunt, takes the bat away, and it's a foul ball as it bounces off the end of the bat and rolls to the right side. Stottlemyre in the second inning hit the ball right on the nose, a line drive out into left field, and Frank Howard made a one-hand stretching catch of it going back to the fence. Epstein down the line from first. McMullen protecting even with a bag at third. Now comes in a step. The set by Humphreys. Epstein charges. Here's the pitch. Stottlemyre bunts it. Back toward the mound. Picked up by Humphreys. Throws to third in time for the force play at third. Bill Robinson taking McMullen's feet out from under him as he went sliding in. So Robinson is out on the force play at third. Humphreys to McMullen. And Robinson went sliding into McMullen and upended him. They exchanged a couple of words. Gibbs goes to second. Stottlemyre at first on a fielder's choice. And Horace Clark the batter with one away. Clark has flied the setter and grounded out to Epstein unassisted at first base. Batting left-handed against the right-hander Humphreys. The set and here's the pitch to Clark. He takes the first one. It's a ball outside. Clark likes to swing at that first pitch. But this one, obviously away from him, and he let it go. Gibbs away from second. Stottlemyre leads at first. Humphreys, high stretch. Goes behind his neck on the stretch. Kicks and deals. Clark swings and lines one up the middle into center field base hit. Gibbs will try to score on it. Here comes Unser's throw to the plate. Here comes Gibbs. He slides. He saves as the ball is knocked out of Casanova, Casanova's grip. And on the play at the plate, Stottlemyre raced on to third, and Clark goes to second. They had a play on Jake Gibbs as Unser fired the ball into the plate from center field. Gibbs banged into Casanova, knocked the ball loose, and the Yankees lead five to nothing. It is a single and a run butted in for Horace Clark. He goes to second base on the throw home. The first hit and first run against Humphreys. And in the Senator bullpen, right-hander Dave Bosman begins warming up. Jerry Kenny at the plate. He's one for two. He's hit a home run over the right field fence. Pitches in the dirt. Dug up nicely by Casanova. Ball one. Credit Clark with a single and a run batted in. He moved to second on the throw home. The wind up in the pitch, low and inside. Two balls and no strikes as the Senators now have the infield in close. Bob Humphreys, who has added a knuckleball to his repertoire of pitches, takes the sign with both feet on the slab. Double pumps, kicks and throws. Fast ball is popped up on the left side. Foul territory. McMullen after it. Over toward the dugout. He has room and he makes the catch. So there is out number two. Bobby Mercer steps in. Mercer's hit the ball well twice this afternoon. He had a long fly ball to answer in center field to end the first inning. And then he put one where it couldn't be caught in the third, in the upper deck here at Kennedy Memorial Stadium. So Mercer is one for two, a chance to knock in a couple right now with a base hit. Full wind up by Humphreys, the pitch to him. Knuckleball is inside, handled nicely by Casanova. Out in right field, Ed Stroud is backed off deep against Mercer. The center fielder, Unser, 
shades a bit toward the alley. Howard gives up the foul line and left. Shortstop Brinkman almost behind the bag. Here's the pitch. Strike is called. Ted Williams was saying down in Florida he did not think that Mercer would be a pull hitter. However, the Senators are playing him as a pull hitter, especially on the infield, with the shortstop way over towards second base. The pitch to him. It is looped out of the right field, and it may drop and does for a base hit. Gets by Stroud. Mercer around second. Two runs have scored. Mercer on his way to third, and he pulls in standing at third. The Yankees lead 7-0. Signal, two runs batted in. A single is credited. Two runs batted in, and an error will be charged to Stroud, letting the ball get by him and allowing Mercer to go to third. So Bobby Mercer gets his second hit of the afternoon and his second and third runs batted in. That may be all for Humphreys. Sid Hudson, the Senators pitching coach, is on his way to the mound. That ball, a humpback line drive. It was a looper out in the sh uh, fairly shallow right. It looked like Stroud at first wanted to make a shoestring catch. Then he tried to play the ball on a short hop, and it skipped by him. And that is not unusual this early in the season. Ballparks have, for the most part, been resotted. And those balls will take some tricky hops in the outfield. Earlier in this game... We saw two balls in the outfield take real strange bounces to get by the fielders. That will be all for Humphreys. Dave Bosman will be coming on to pitch now for the Senators. So Humphreys is credited with one full inning. He came on to retire Tresh for the final out in the top of the third. He has retired two men here in the fourth. Could have had the side were it not for the error by Cullen on Gibbs' fly ball down the right field line. The runs that Humphreys are unearned, all unearned. The three runs given up by Humphreys are unearned. And, of course, should Mercer score, it would be an unearned, unearned run, too. Humphreys has allowed three runs, two hits. He walked one, and he struck out nobody. Dick Bosman now coming on to pitch for the Senators. Bosman, 25-year-old right-hander, 6'3", 205 pounds, out of Kenosha, Wisconsin. As I recall, Bosman... He had a uh, good second half of 1967 with the Senators, or a good uh, late season with the Senators. He won three and lost one uh, that year. Was with the club all 1968, but he only won two and he lost nine. Bosman likes to live a little dangerously at times. Bosman likes to live a little dangerously at times because uh, he builds and uh, drives drag racers. Got one up to 187 miles an hour one time. Now, if he could throw a baseball that fast. <laughs> he comes in with the Yankees leading 7-0 here on opening day 1969. This going generation Yankee team giving it the go this afternoon. They've had three stolen bases. They've been taking the extra base. They've hit the long ball. And so far, I've had fine pitching from Stottlemyre. Roy White ready to go against Bosman. Right-hander whips the ball in, and it's uh, called strike one. Case you're just joining us, Bosman the third, Senator Hurler. Pasquale started, then Humphreys. Looked at third base. Full windup by the Husky right-hander. The pitch, breaking pitch is low. Dug up nicely by Casanova. One ball and one strike to Roy White. Roy walked in the second inning, stole second, then stole third, and scored the first run of the game. In the third inning, he grounded out to Cullen at second. Mercer gives him a false start down the line from third. Stops quickly. 
Osmond staring down to Casanova. Mercer gives him another little jump. And now White steps out. Time is called by the plate umpire, Jim Honachick. Hank Soar at first, Frank Umont at second, Bill Haller at third, and Ron Luciano down the left field foul line. Pitch is low. Two balls and a strike. And again, Casanova has to dig it out of the dirt. And now the Washington catcher requests time and goes out to the mound. McMullen also comes across from third. A new look to this Yankee team this year. A bright new look. Some young faces. Young bodies. But this afternoon, anyway, performing like veterans. Jerry Kenny and Bobby Mercer. After returning from the service, provided a spark in this one, certainly with back-to-back -back homers in the third. Roy White led the Yankees in just about every category last year, waiting for the pitch. He fouls it back off the shin guards of Casanova. Two balls and two strikes on Roy White. Joe Pepitone is on deck. Full wind-up by Bosman, 2-2 pitch. Fouled off the right side, rolling just over toward the Senator dugout. Hush has fallen over this crowd of some 44,000 this afternoon. Here's the 2-2 pitch to White. Low it inside, gets away from Casanova. Here comes Mercer, he scores! Low inside pitch got away from Casanova, and Bobby Mercer raced home to make it 8 to nothing. We'll wait for the scorer's ruling on it. A wild pitch is charged. The run is charged to Humphreys. It is unearned. It's an eight to nothing ball game. The wind up three two to White. High fly ball. Shallow right field. The second baseman Cullen is back under it. Shading his eyes. Makes the catch. And the side is retired. But the Yankees have scored four runs in the fourth inning. On two base hits. Two Washington errors and nobody left on base. At the end of three and a half. It's the Yankees eight and the Senators nothing. And now listen for your name as Peels thanks some more fans of their real draft beer. Thank you very much, thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very much, thank you very, very, very much. Robert Rappaport of Rockville Center says, I think Peels real draft beer is one of the finest beers that I've ever had. It's terrific. Thank you very, very, very much. Steve Stillman of Staten Island says, I just wanted to say that Peels real draft beer is very, very good. And I want to thank you for putting it out. Thank you very, very, very much. Bill Grafton of Brooklyn says, Peel's Real Draft is about the best beer I've ever tasted. It's smoother, creamier, and has greater body. Thank you very much. Thank you very, 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 very much. Why have so many people been convinced that our beer is better than their beer? We think it's simple. Peel's has real draft beer in a can, and that's what makes the difference. Do us a favor. Try Peel's Real Draft. And when you're convinced, let us know. So we can say to you, Thank you very Thank you very much. Well, the Yankees have manufactured an 8 to nothing lead now for Mel Stottlemyre. As we go to the bottom half of the fourth, and Stottlemyre will work to Epstein, McMullen, and Cullen. President Nixon still in attendance. Seated between the owner of the Senators, Mr. Bob Short. Here's the pitch now to Epstein, just outside. Mr. Nixon seated between Mr. Short and Bud Wilkinson, former football coach at Oklahoma. 1-0 pitch. Epstein hits a high fly ball, straightaway center. Back goes Kenny. Circles to his right. He's under it. Glove up. He's got it. Epstein flies out to Jerry Kenny in center. One down, and the batter will be Ken McMullen. 
McMullen slapped one back to Stottlemyre, and Mel threw him out to end the first inning. There's a swing and a foul back off the chest protector of Jake Gibbs. No balls and a strike to McMullen. McMullen hit 20 home runs last year, second on the club to Frank Howard, who led all of Major League Baseball with 44. A wind up in the pitch to him. Strike is called. Young man owned by the Yankees led all of baseball in homers last year. Tony Solita with 51, including the playoff games. 0-2 pitch, low and away. One ball and two strikes. Well, now nobody on. Yankees leading 8 to nothing. Stottlemyre has a two-hitter going. The pitch. Bouncing ball hit toward Clark. Second baseman scoops it up, fires on to Pepitone, and plenty of time to get McMullen two away. I'm sure you know that Ted Williams and the Senators furnished the Yankees' opposition for the opening series at Yankee Stadium beginning a week from tomorrow. Senators in the afternoons of Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. And they'll be followed by the world champion Detroit Tigers on Saturday and Sunday. Here's the, show, the second baseman, Tim Cullen, and the first pitch is in there for a call strike. Stottlemyre with an 8 to nothing lead, getting that first pitch right over, getting a jump on these hitters. He fires again. Breaking ball is chopped foul past the third base coach, Wayne Terwilliger. No balls, two strikes on Cullen. Tim, a 2.30 hitter last year. Had three home runs, 29 runs batted in. Right-hand batter. Bends at the waist, chokes up on the bat handle. The pitch is high. Gibbs had to stretch for it. A ball and two strikes. Yankees play him to the left side. Pitch on the way. Line drive, left field. If it's a fair ball, it's trouble. It is foul. And there's the first chance for the extra umpire this afternoon, Ron Luciano, to make a call down that left field foul line. He's a rookie umpire in the American League. He did not leave any doubt. He gave it the big motion down there. Count holding one and two on Cullen. Stottlemyre pumps, kicks, and throws. Breaking pitch is lined out into center field, and it's in for a base hit. Kenny charges, scoops it up barehanded, fires back to second base where Tresh takes the throw. So Cullen is on with the third hit of the afternoon for the Washington Senators. It brings up shortstop Eddie Brinkman. Pete Rose and Bobby Tolan homered for Cincinnati in the first inning, and the Reds lead the Dodgers 2 to nothing at the end of one. Drysdale against Gary Nolan. Line drive, and it is over Bobby Mercer out into left field. Base set on his way to third is Cullen. The throw goes to second, and safe at second base is Brinkman with a double. Roy White fielded that ball and left, whipped it to second, and Brinkman was safe by an eyelash as Horace Clark applied the tag, but just not in time. So the Senators have their fourth hit, and the batter will be the catcher, Paul Casanova. Activity starts in the Washington bullpen. Right-hander Casey Cox. Casanova bounced back to Stottlemyre his first time up. Full windup by Mel. The pitch is in there for a strike.
Third time in the game, the Senators have had a runner or runners in scoring position. A one pitch. Just a bit inside for a ball. One and one. In the first inning, the Senators had a runner at second with one out. In the third inning, they had a runner at second with one out. Saddlemeyer takes the sign from Gibbs, looks over to third base, sees Cullen, Brinkman at second, the pitch. Popped up foul behind the plate, it'll be out of play. Back onto the screen. One ball, two strike count on Paul Casanova. Casanova was the all-star catcher a couple of years ago. He was voted to the team. I don't believe he got into the all-star game. I think Freehan caught all, what was it, 15 innings. And last year, Casanova tailed off considerably. Fans have come alive here at the stadium. The wind up in the pitch. Foul back. Keep having a tendency to refer to this beautiful ballpark as the D.C. Stadium. Which was the name of it until this year when it was renamed in honor of the late Robert F. Kennedy. It is now Robert F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium. A ball and two strikes on Paul Casanova. Stottlemyre, full windup. The kick, here's the pitch. Ground ball to third. Mercer has it. Fires on to first in time, and the side is retired. Mercer throws out Casanova, and for the Senators, no runs. A pair of hits. There were no Yankee errors, and the runners are left. At the end of four, Yankees eight, Senators nothing. Hey, is your town a Peel's draft beer town? Then it may be in this commercial. Listen. Thank you very much, thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very much, thank you very, very, very much. To the friends of Peel's Real Draft Beer in Westfield, Massachusetts, Elmira, New York, Rutland, Vermont, and Teaneck, New Jersey, we say... Thank you very, very, very much. To all the Peel's fans in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Horseheads, New York, Matawan, New Jersey, Homer, New York, and Burlington, Vermont, we say... Thank you very, very, very much. To our many admirers in New Haven, Connecticut, King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, Framingham, Massachusetts, and Asbury Park, New Jersey, we say... Thank you very much, thank you very, 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 very much. In hundreds of towns, thousands of people are finding that our beer is better than their beer. Why? We think it's simple. Peels has real draft beer in a can, and that's what makes the difference. To all of you who've switched to Peels, whoever you are, wherever you are, we say... I you very, very, very... Thank you very much. We're getting ready for the fifth inning. But before we do, let's pause right now for station identification. And right after today's game, join Bill Coder for more music here on WHN 1050 New York. Joe Pepitone, Tom Tresh, and Bill Robinson do up in that order as we go to the top of the fifth. Dick Bosman on the hill for the Senators, and between every half inning, the photographers get up, move over in front of the presidential section to snap pictures of President Nixon and his party. Here's the pitch to Pepe. It is low, ball one. Pepitone flied to center in the second inning, then he doubled to right center field in the third. He's facing Bosman for the first time. Right-hander kicks and fires. Pepitone pops it up in a shallow center. Coming hard is Unser. He's under it now. And he's got it. Unser had a pretty long run for that one. He was playing Pepitone deep. But he got to it. So there's one out and Tom Thresh the batter. Thresh knocked in the first run of the season for the Yankees with a single to right field in the second, delivering Roy White from third base. Then in the third, he flied out to right fielder, Ed Stroud. The pitch to Tresh. He takes it low.
Foul ball bounced back behind the plate. Evens the count of ball on a strike. Tresh was a doubtful starter up until game time today because he has been suffering from a rather heavy cold and sore throat. Had he not been able to play, of course, Gene Michael would have filled in his short. But he informed manager how he was able. He takes low, two balls, one strike. Yankees have backup protection at every infield position. Michael backs up Tresh at short. Bobby Cox, the backup man for Mercer at third. Nate Oliver will back up Clark at second. And Len Bamer will back up Pepitone at first. 2-1 pitch coming. Fresh fouls it away to the seats on the third base side. Michael can also play second. So can Cox. Bamer can play all around the infield. He's had experience at all four infield positions. And backing up the outfield, Dick Simpson and Billy Cowan. The other Yankee catcher and not a backup man by any means as he will share the duties with Gibbs this year is Frank Fernandez. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch to Tresh. Bouncer down the first baseline, fielded by Epstein behind the bag, makes the play unassisted, and there are two out. You'd have to say the Yankees have a strong bench this year. Bill Robinson steps in at the plate. Robbie has reached twice, scored once. He reached on a fielder's choice in the second, stole the second at base, and scored. He walked in the fourth. Bounces a foul back out of play. Yes, the Yankees have a good bench. And uh, should anything happen there to uh, weaken the bench, they have some fine young ball players will be at Syracuse. No one pitch. Inside. One ball, one strike. Think of outfielders. You have to think of a Tommy Chope. Had a very good spring. Young catcher, Thurman Munson. Tony Salida. Frank Baker, the shortstop. Pitch is high to Robinson. Two balls and a strike. They are names to keep in mind. They'll, I'm sure, see action eventually at Yankee Stadium. Ball quite impressive this spring. 2-1 pitch. It is a bit low. Ball three. I'll tell you another young man that I think is going to be a good one is that Ronnie Bloomberg. He gets a little more experience. Jim Lytle, another fine young outfielder. If you think about some of the youngsters in the organization. 3-1 pitch to Robinson. Golf foul past Hauser at third. Tony Salida, we mentioned. Think about pitchers. Think of a John Cumberland. I'll tell you a left-hander that looked quite impressive. Was that Gary Jones? Didn't he? Yes, he did. They're all names to keep in mind. Mickey Scott, another one. All right, 3 2 pitch to Robinson. Swing and a miss, strike three. That is the first strikeout by Washington pitching as the Yankees go down in order. Nothing across, and at the end of four and a half, the score New York 8, Washington nothing. We're talking with Charlie Saddleback, all star third baseman of the Pony League. Understand you have some tips for the Little Leaguers, Charlie. I've got a tip for batters. Never, you better take notes, kids, but never come up to hit without bringing a bat. Not your glove, but your bat. And here's another tip. When playing a doubleheader, always bring along a couple of sandwiches. That's it? Oh, that's all the tips you have? Yeah. Oh, yeah. One more thing. For you moms and dads, when you go out to hit the old ball around, make sure the place you're playing at is within six blocks of a First National City branch. What's that got to do with baseball? Eh, nothing really, but you never know when you're going to need a personal loan. Know what I mean? For furniture, baseball uniforms, doctors, or dentist bills, or any worthwhile thing. Is that so? Of course it's so. All-star third baseman, don't lie. And First National City has over 170 branches throughout New York, Nassau, and Westchester. So next time you need a personal loan, drop by First National City. Tell them Charlie Saddleback sent you. 
We go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Pitcher Dick Bosman due to lead off, and he will bat. There is no activity in the Senator bullpen. There has been no reason for activity at all in the Yankee bullpen with Stottlemyer in control through the first four. Bosman is a right-hand hitter. He'll be followed by Unser and then Stroud. Mel's first pitch. It is over but low. He had the outside corner but downstairs. Next pitch misses. Ball two. With a temperature here in the middle to upper 60s. One of the finest opening days I can remember in a long time. And in New York today, temperature of 70, we're told. 2 nothing pitch. Bosman takes low ball three, and Stottlemyre's way behind on the pitcher, Dick Bosman. There's a strike. Three and one. Yankees have scored their eight runs on seven hits, helped along by a couple of Senator errors. Stottlemyre has allowed four hits, two singles and two doubles. He winds and he deals, and he's got a strike two. Full count, three and two on Bosman. Dell Unser is on deck. Crowd here in excess of 40,000. The pitch. Swung on and missed. He swung at a bad pitch and throws his bat down in disgust. That pitch was outside and low, and Bosman bit for it. For Mel Stottlemyre, second strikeout of the game. Big hand for Del Unser. He's going to be a favorite here in Washington. In this ball game, he's had two hits, a single and a double. He plays center field like a greyhound. He moves, and he's got a good arm. He takes a strike over the inside corner. This answer last year, you may recall, participated in 10 double plays and had 22 assists from center field. He lines this one. He's got his third hit to left field. A single left for answer, his third hit of the ball game. Base at number five for Washington. And it brings up Ed Stroud, the creeper. Stroud grounded out to Clark in the first inning and then was robbed of a base hit on a diving, tumbling, somersaulting catch by Roy White in the third. Oh, what a catch White made on that play. Stottlemyre from the stretch. Fastball is in, strike call. Well, this Stroud had quite a day against the Yankees last year at the stadium. I can remember a doubleheader and nine trips. I think he had a single, a double, a triple, and two home runs. Next pitch to him. Line to the center field. Base hit. Unser turns second and now goes back. Kenny can't pick it up, but Unser had stopped at second. It's a single for Stroud, and the Senators have runners at first and second. Base hit number six. Again, this huge crowd comes to life. The batter is Frank Howard. Howard is grounded to third and fly to right. Donald Meyer looks back, checks the outfield defenses. He sees Kenny over toward the alley on the left side. White is deep and left. Robinson gives up the foul line and righties in right center and deep. Swing and a miss by Howard. Strike line. Infield fades to the left. Fresh midway between second and third. Clark squeezed over toward the bag at second. The right side of the infield fairly well open. Pepitone knows back and he can move well to his right should the occasion arise. Stottlemyre kicks and deals. Check swing and a strike two. No balls, two strikes on Howard.
Frank Howard led all the major leagues in homers last year with 44. Quick now, how many did he hit against the Yankees? He said none. You were absolutely right. Only team he did not homer against. 0-2 pitch to him. Swing and a miss. Stottlemyre got him. Third strikeout for Stottlemyre. And there are two down. The batter is Mike Epstein, who has walked and flied to Kenny in center. Tresh telling the outfield that there are two away. Just a reminder. The outfield plays straight away on Epstein. Kenny right up the middle in deep center. The set by Stottlemyre and the pitch. Check swing. It's low. Ball one. The Yankee outfield really does not play Epstein as a strict pull hitter. Bill Robinson still is well over toward the alley in right center field. He and Clark playing the same way to draw a straight line between them. The pitch. Low inside. Dug up nicely by Gibbs. Shortstop Tresh is well over towards second base and deep. But Clark less than halfway between second and first. He favors the second base side of the infield. Set by Stottlemyre. 2 nothing pitch to Epstein. Inside at the knees. Ball three. The only walk given up by Stottlemyre was to Epstein in the first inning. It was a semi-intentional walk. Well, that first base open and didn't want to give the left-hander too much to swing at with the right-hander McMullen following. There's the set, 3 nothing pitch. Strike call, caught the outside corner. Yankees leading 8 to nothing. in case you're just tuning away. Frank Messer here with Bill Vizzuto and Jerry Coleman in Washington. The set by Stottlemyre. 3-1 pitch. Line and it's fast track to the left center. They set the center to score. Roy White throw goes into second base over Clark Ted, but Benetton backs him up with no harm done. And the Senators have scored on a single by Mike Epstein. A line drive. Fresh goes for it and couldn't get it. Fresh made a valiant try to preserve the shutout for his close friend, Mel Stottlemyre, but could not quite reach it. And that is the first run the Senators have scored on an opening day game since 1966 when Frank Howard hit a home run against Cleveland. They had been shut out on opening day for 25 and two-thirds innings. Lindy McDaniel gets up now in the Yankee bullpen. It's an 8-1 to ball game. Ed Stroud now at third, Epstein at first. The batter is Ken McMullen, the third baseman. He has hit back to the mound and grounded the second. Right-hand batter. Pepitone holding against Epstein. The pitch is low, ball one. Senators now show one run on seven hits. The Yankees have eight runs on seven hits. Lindy McDaniel begins loosening up in the Yankee bullpen under the watchful eye of bullpen coach Jim Hegan. Runners at the corners, two down. Stottlemyre looking down to Gibbs, starts his move, and the 1-0 pitch to McMullen. It's high and tight, two balls and no strikes. On deck for the Senators is Tim Cullen, their second baseman. Third base coach Wayne Terwilliger has a word with the runner, Ed Stroud. The pitch to the plate, get on the ground is short. Fresh has it, fires it to Clark. The force is executed at second on Epstein and the side retired. Senators come up with one run on three hits. There were no Yankee errors and two men are left on base. So now at the end of five full innings of play, the score, the New York Yankees, eight, the Washington Senators, one. Well, the Yankees, again in 1969, want to make it just as easy as possible for all their fans to obtain tickets to Yankee home games. 
So again this year, the Yankees have established numerous ticket outlets throughout the metropolitan area. There's the stadium, of course, where you can uh, get your tickets by mail or in person. Or you can stop by the Grand Central Station uh, ticket office. Any one of the Schraps restaurants, 170 branches of the First National City Bank. At ticket reservation systems outlets, where you order by computer. And for the benefit of Yankee fans over in New Jersey, the New Jersey Automobile Club offices in Oradell, Patterson, and Jersey City. Yes, sir, all around town, throughout New Jersey and Connecticut, wherever you live, it's just as easy as pie to pick up Yankee tickets. And we'll see you at the stadium a week from tomorrow. Jake Gibbs is set to lead off as we go to the sixth inning. The Yankees in front eight to one. Gibbs has had a big part in it. He's batted in a run and he has scored a run. Single to knock in the second run of the game in the second inning. Reached on an error and scored in the fourth. Dick Bosman winds and deals. Gibbs looks and a strike call to cross at the letters. And the one strike pitch to Jake. Get on the ground to the right side. Cullen digs it off the left ankle. Throws on the first base in time. One out and Stottlemyre will bat. Dignitaries galore on hand this afternoon. President Nixon still in his seat. Stottlemyre swings and misses strike one. Baseball Commissioner Boy Kuhn. American League President Joe Cronin. Yankee President Mike Burke, just to mention a few of them. Senator's owner Bob Short, of course. Oh, one pitch, swing and a miss by Mel on what appeared to be a sinker. No balls, two strikes. Stottlemyre is a batter. His 0-4-2, however, he has reached on a fielder's choice and scored a run. He had a line drive to left field that was caught over the head by Frank Howard back in the second. 0-2 pitch to him. Swing and a miss, strike three. Dropped by Casanova. Stottlemyre is tagged at the plate. Second strikeout for Bosman. Bosman now has retired everybody he has faced since coming on in relief of Humphreys in the fourth. He has retired six men. Second baseman Horace Clark knocked in a run with a single in the fourth inning. Later scored run number seven for the Yankees. The pitch to him. Down low, ball one. Clark is one for three. Looking down the batting order, every Yankee has either had a base hit or scored a run in this game. The wind up in the pitch. Fly ball out into right center field, chasing Unser back into his left. He's there, makes the catch. Del Unser, the center fielder, moving back into his left to retire Clark, and the Yankees go down in order. Nothing across. And at the end of the top half of the sixth inning, the score, the New York Yankees eight, and the Washington Senators one. April 14th, a week from today, is a big day for all Yankee fans. It's the third annual Welcome Home Luncheon held in honor of the Yankees by the Chamber of Commerce. The Grand Ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria is the location, and the entire Yankee team, including President Michael Burke, Executive Vice President and General Manager Lee McPhail, and Manager Ralph Hawk will be on hand. Festivities begin at noon, and the cost, $12.50 per person. Tables of 10 are available for $125. You can make the scene individually or as a group by contacting the Chamber of Commerce, 65 Liberty Street, New York City. Mayor John Lindsay is expected to be on hand to roll out the welcome mat for the Yankees and the Yankee family. And just as last year, a good friend, Joe Garagiola, will be the master of ceremonies.
We have one change for the Yankees as we go to the bottom half of the sixth. Gene Michael replaces Tom Tresh at shortstop. Michael now at short, replacing Tresh. Gene Michael at short for the Yankees. Michael. Now, two very important dates to remember. A week from today, the welcome home luncheon in the grand ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria. We'll see you there at noon. All the Yankees will be there. And then a week from tomorrow, we'll see you at Yankee Stadium. And all the Yankees, you better believe me, will be there. Here's Tim Cullen to lead off the bottom half of the sixth. He's one for two in the ball game. Single to center his last time up. Right-hand hitter takes a strike. Got the outside corner at the knees. White plays him fairly deep out in left field. Robinson gives up the foul line at right. Jerry Kenny in center. To his own right, our left. The pitch. It's over but low, and the count is even a ball and a strike. Gene Michael at short. So the Yankees have an infield of Mercer, Michael, Clark, and Pepitone. 1-1 one, one pitch. Get on the ground foul toward third and scooped up by Wayne Terwilliger, the twig, they called him in his playing days. There's a foul ball peeled back on the screen. And the count is a ball and two strikes. Yankees leading 8-1. to one. Saddlemeyer into the line. Kicks and throws. And there's the line drive out into left center. It's going to drop in for the base hit. Jerry Kenny over to it. Scoops it up on the ground. Fires into second. And Tim Cullen has his second hit of the ball game. And for the Senators, base hit number eight. Now the shortstop, Ed Brinkman. Casey Cox is up again in the Washington bullpen. Right-hand pitcher. Brinkman, one for two. Takes ball one. Brinkman struck out in the second, doubled in the fourth. The pitch to him. Fastball is low. Two balls and no strikes. Paul Casanova, the catcher, is on deck. Then the pitcher, Bosman, would, would, would be due and uh, would feel sure a pinch hitter would come out. There's a ball up high, and it's 3-0 now on Brinkman. <laughs> 3 nothing pitch. Strike call. Stottlemyre has seen quite a few base runners behind him today. The Senators have stranded so far seven men through five innings. Mal ready. 3-1 pitch. Strike two call. Belt high on the inside corner. Only in the second inning did Stottlemyre get the side in order when he retired Cullen, Frankman, and Casanova. On a pair of ground balls and a strikeout. Three two pitch. Line out of the right center. It's going to be in for a base hit. Bill Robinson cuts it off quickly. Fires back and Cullen holds it second. Brinkman has his second hit of the ball game. And for Washington, it is hit number nine. Uh, now we have time called as uh, center fielder Jerry Kenny comes in toward the Yankee dugout. Jake Gibbs at the mound talking to Stottlemyre. Gary Holman has come out on deck for the Senators. Jerry Kenny 
running in from center field has disappeared into the Yankee dugout. Now he reappears and on the dead run heads back towards center field. While we have a moment, let's pause right now. This is New York Yankee baseball, and we pause for station identification. The WHN weather word sunny and mild this afternoon, high in the mid-60s. And right now, it's 65 degrees. WHN, 1050, New York. We're ready to go. Runners at first and second, nobody out. Casanova waiting. Stottlemyre off the stretch. Here's the pitch. He misses, ball one. Five of the Senators' nine hits have now come in the last two innings. They got three hits and a run in the fifth. A set by Stottlemyre. Dealing to Casanova. There's a long drive down the left side. However, it is fading. It is foul. Lindy McDaniel throwing again in the Yankee bullpen. Casey Cox warming up in the Senator bullpen. And Gary Holman. First baseman and outfielder has come out on deck to bat for Bosman. Dottlemeyer takes the sign from Gibbs. Cullen and Brinkman lead away. And the pitch. High pop foul. Gibbs coming back toward the screen. He's got room. He is under it and he's got it. And that's all for Casanova as he fouls out to catcher Jake Gibbs one down. And we'll have Gary Holman batting for Bosman. Holman was a fine pinch hitter for the Senators last year. As a pinch hitter, he batted 344 with 11 hits and 32 trips. Left hand hitter. Good first baseman, too. He swings to the first one, sends a long drive to left. White throws over, and White has it. Roy White coasted right with it, moving toward the corner, and pulled it in. So Holman, first ball hitting, is retired. And there's that hand again for Del Unser, who is three for three. Two singles and a double for Unser. He scored the only run for Washington. He's up with runners at first and second. Two outs. And the pitch is just off the outside. Corner ball one. Phil Rizzuto waiting in the wings right now to come in and describe the final three innings for you. 1-0 pitch on the way. It is low this time. To the left-hand hitting Dell Unser. Unser bats and throws left-handed. He chokes up about two or three inches on the bat handle now, waiting. 2-0 pitch. Swung on and Luke Powell to the seats off the third base side. Two balls and a strike. Like to say hello to all our friends up Albany, New York way. And there's a fine time up there in the Yankee caravan this past winter. Yeah, they treated us nice, and we appreciate it. 2 1 pitch now to Unser. It is a ball three, three and one. Cullen at second, Brinkman at first, two out. The set by Stottlemyre on the pitch. Get on the ground toward Clark. He's got it. Flips it to Michael. Force play at second on Brinkman, and the side is retired. So Unser is retired for the first time in this game, and for the Senators in the bottom half of the sixth inning. No runs, despite two base hits. There were no Yankee errors, and two men are left on. At the end of six full innings, the score. The Yankees eight, and the Senators one.
Totals on this ball game right now. For the Yankees, eight runs, seven hits, no errors. And for the Senators, one run, nine hits, and two errors. The Senators have had the opportunities. They have left so far nine men on base. The Yankees have left two on base. Pasquale started for the Senators, gave up four runs on five hits. Humphreys gave up four runs on two hits. Donald has allowed the Senators one run on nine hits. Mel has struck out three, and he has walked one. Casey Cox coming in. Right-hander Casey Cox will be the new pitcher. And looking quickly at the scoreboard, the Dodgers have moved in front of the Reds, three to two at the end of two and a half. Don Drysdale pitching for L.A., Gary Nolan for Cincinnati. Cincinnati got a two-run lead in the first inning on home runs by Pete Rose and Bobby Tolan. But now the Dodgers have come back with one in the second and two in the third for a three to two lead. San Francisco plays in Atlanta tonight, and those are the only other games scheduled on this opening day. Well, through six, the Yankees leading eight to one, and we're going to slip away and uh, make room right now for the scooter. We'll be in here to tell you all about the rest of this one. So let me slip out, and Phil Rizzuto, you ready to go to work here, Ben? All set, Frank. And everything has been turning out beautifully for uh, the New York Yankees today. Opening day and uh, got off to a 8 nothing lead. They lead now 8-1. to one. Senators scored in the fifth inning. But the Yankees have shown what we've been telling you all spring with their hustle, their speed on the bases. And a little surprising, the long ball from two fellas you, you don't really expect it from, Jerry Kenny and Bobby Mercer who had back-to-back -back home runs in the third inning. Bobby Mercer also singled in the fourth and has driven in three runs for the Yankees today. Joseph Casey Cox, he likes to go by the nickname of Casey. He's a big fella, six feet, five inches tall, 200 pounds. And he'll be pitching to Jerry Kenny. Jerry lined hard to center field his first time up, lined a homer into the right field uh, bleaches against the scoreboard actually not in the bleaches and uh, then popped to third base in the fourth inning sun shining brightly we couldn't ask for a better day today in the nation's capital full house Casey Cox the first pitch to Kenny is low ball one Ken McMullen playing very shallow at third base so is Brinkman at shortstop Kenny with that good speed Pitch by Cox. It's outside and high. Ball two. Two and all. President Nixon still here at the ball game. The 2-0 pitch is lined to left field for a base hit. That's going to be a double at least. Kenny around first. Look at him go. Frank Howard up with the ball and Kenny is in with a stand-up double. Man, Jerry, Kenny went with that pitch something we've seen both teams do today getting those opposite field base hits so Jerry gets his second base hit of the ball game first hit off Cox and for the Yankees their eighth base hit of the ball game here's Bobby Mercer fly to center hit a long home run in the upper deck in the third and single to right to drive in two more in the fourth the pitch is low and inside ball one one of those games the Yankees took advantage of their base hits a couple of miscues by the Senators they have eight runs on eight hits the Senators actually out hitting the Yankees nine to eight but the Senators have managed to pick up only one run the pitch to Mercer lined to right field but foul he got around on a high curveball Yankees have three stolen bases in the ball game Roy White stole second and third in the second inning and then Bill Robinson stole second base in the second inning. Both of them coming around to score. On deck is Roy White. Stretched by Casey Cox. His pitch is fouled while left and out of play. Just below the battery of cameramen we have in the booth next to us. Boy, I tell you, they really got him. got them all over the ballpark Vince Lombardi is here today he's always been a great baseball fan and when he was mentioned as a possible candidate for commissioner of baseball he was very excited 
the pitch swing and a miss he went after a high outside curveball so Bobby Mercer is struck out and the batter now Roy White Roy 0 for 2 walked in the second bounced the second in the third and popped the second in the fourth Outfield straight away on Roy, batting left-handed against the right-hander Casey Cox. On deck, Joe Pepitone. Mm -hmm. Kenny leads away. Here's the stretch. The pitch swing and a foul over by the center to dugout. Strike one. Secret service men all over this ballpark. Look at that one secret service man has not seen one play in the ball game. He's sitting right in back of the center to dugout with his back to the field just scouting the stands keeping an eye out Cox ready again the pitch low and outside one on one they are taking no chances I was down the field before the game started walking around didn't have my field card out the big red card and I had a hand put on my arm by a secret service man he said let me see your card please and I whipped it out in a hurry outside two balls and a strike Yankees eight Senators one top of the seventh Anto plays uh, deep center field here at the stadium Stretch by Cox. His pitch is fouled on the left field line. That'll go into the seat and out of play. Well back in the crowd. Count is even on Roy White, two and two. The Yankees have an off day tomorrow before resuming activities with Washington Wednesday night. And then again Thursday afternoon. All right, Cox gets the sign from Casanova. Checks Kenny at second base. Kicks, delivers, it's fouled again, almost in the same spot, and the crowd down the left field line. It's a beautiful ball ballpark, Robert uh, Kennedy Memorial Stadium, as they've renamed it. it used to be D.C. Stadium. Completely encircled by stands. Wind never a factor in this ballpark. That's why the balls travel so well here. All right, Cox ready again. His 2-2 pitch is fouled to our left and out of play. Roy's just slapping at that ball. With two strikes on him, he's trying to protect the plate. I'm sure you heard that, but if you didn't, 45,113. Largest crowd ever to see an opening game in Washington, D.C. And the magic names of uh, President Nixon, Ted Williams, helped bring that crowd here. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on a low sinker. So Casey Cox, after giving up and leadoff double to Jerry Kenny, has struck out Bobby Mercer and Roy White, and here's Pepitone. Joe fly to center in the second, double a right center in the third, and fly to center in the fifth. Two men are out. All right, you heard that announcement in the background. The pitch by Cox is low and inside, ball one. On deck, Gene Michael, who went in to replace Tommy Tresh. As you heard, Tommy had been feeling terrible. He did not play in yesterday's game against the Giants. He was a doubtful starter today, but he did and drove in the first run of the ball game. Pitch to Pepe, pop foul, might be playable, Mike Epstein. Over in front of the center to dugout. Makes the catch in foul territory. 
So for the Yankees, no runs on a base hit. There were no errors and a man left. And the score now at the end of six and a half innings, the Yankees eight and the Senators one. Well, a reminder that the 1969 edition of the world champion Detroit Tigers will hit New York for a big three-game series at the stadium I'm sure you won't want to miss. Denny McLean, Mickey Lolich, Willie Horton, Al Kaline and company will be in for a Saturday afternoon ladies' day on April the 19th and then a big Sunday doubleheader on April the 20th. So why don't you start planning now for select seating? And keep in mind, the Tigers will not be in town again until mid-June. And if you remember one stretch last year, the Yankees took four in a row from the Tigers. $4 box seats and $2.75 reserve seats can be ordered by mail at Yankee Stadium or in person at the stadium. Also at Grand Central Station and at all Yankee ticket outlets in the metropolitan area. So, a word to the wise. Get your tickets now. Mel Stottlemyre will be pitching to Ed Stroud, Frank Howard, and Mike Epstein here in the bottom of the seventh. The Yankees leading 8-1. to one. All the teams will have uh, the little emblem on their left sleeves signifying the uh, centennial year of baseball, 100 years. The umpires, I notice, are wearing them on their right sleeve just to be a little different. We have five umpires in today's game, one down the left field line. The first pitch head, Stroud, is strike one call. Stroud has bounced to second. Fly to left field, where Roy White made a spectacular diving, uh, tumbling one-hand catch and in single to center. Pitch one down the left field line. Roy White starts in, goes back on the warning track, back, makes the catch right against the fence. Couldn't go back another inch. Stroud laid the wood to that one, almost had himself an opposite field home run. Roy White, though playing it very well, leaned against the fence to make the catch, and it's one away, and here's Frank Howard. Crowd getting on Howard a little bit. He struck out in the fifth inning with two men on, and the third inning fly to right, and the first inning bounced to Bobby Mercer at third. Dottlemyer's pitch is a curve over, strike one call. Wayne Terwilliga, the coach at third, is coaching in short left field with Frank Howard up there, and you can't blame him. Pitch swing and a miss at a low curve. Strike two. Howard wanted to lay off that, but started the bat and couldn't stop it. Battlemeyer has had uh, four shaky innings. The first inning, the fourth inning, the fifth inning, and the sixth inning. But he's managed to wiggle his way out. Low with the sink of that time. A ball and two strikes. One out, nobody on. Eight to one, the Yankees lead. Bottom of the seventh. Infield deep, outfield deep. Just about see Jerry Kenny in deep left center field. Low with the sinker again. Evens the count of two and two. On, Fans in the sunshine really enjoying this shirt sleeve weather. Sidearm curve, bounce to short. Michael is there, up with it. Fires the first in time. Frank Howard's retired. And it's two away. That brings up Mike Epstein, who has driven in the only run for the Senators. With a single to left center field in the fifth inning. He's also fly to center and walk. So Mike is one for two. Two men out, nobody on. Stottlemyre's pitch is low ball one. On deck, Ken McMullen. The curve swing and a miss. Strike one, one and one. Mike was swinging for the fences on that one. They play Epstein just about straight away. Give him a lot of room down the right field and left field line. Curve, bounce foul down the right field line. A ball and two strikes. Kind of unusual the way they bunch Epstein towards center field. 
The left-hand batter, Bill Robinson, is well over in right center. And Roy White well over in left center. And there's a bouncer to Stottlemyre. He one-hands it. Easy toss to Pepitone for the out, and Stottlemyre has a 1-2-3 inning. And now at the end of seven full innings, it's the Yankees eight, the Senators one. We're talking today with Charlie Pinchpenny, the cheapest man in baseball. Charlie's the man who discovered a way of making one baseball last through an entire season. Can you tell us about it, Charlie? Sure. I took a 300-foot rope, see? Tied one end to a steel screw I put in the baseball. Uh -huh. On the other end, I tied around my pitcher's arm. So when a ball was hit into the stands or even out of the park, the pitcher could just reel it in like a big fish. Oh, and it worked? Well, it was going fine till one day my ace right-hander, Sammy Sitter, threw a change up to hard luck Hanky. Uh -huh. And Hanky really teed off. He hit that ball over 500 feet. But the rope was only 300 feet. Yeah. What happened to your right-hander? Sammy? Uh, we call him Lefty now. Of course, there's always new ways to save, like with a passbook savings account at First National City Bank. See, they figure the interest from the day you put the money in till the day you take it out. So if you're always putting money in or taking it out, you could earn more than in an account where they pay the interest only on the money you got in there at the end of each quarter. Believe me, that means a lot to a cheap guy like me. I suppose so. Thank you, Charlie. All ready for the top of the eighth inning. Yankees leading 8-1 to one in the opening game of the season. Gene Michael up for his first time. As we told you, he's filling in for Tommy Tresh. Tommy had been up three times with one base hit. Gene has switched hitter batting left-hander. Casey Cox, the fourth senator pitcher in the afternoon, delivers a pop-up to the left side to third baseman McMullen. Right there, makes the catch, and it's one away. So Michael, first ball swinging, pops out to third. That'll bring up Bill Robinson. Bill bounced into a force play, walked and struck out. He has stolen a base and scored a run in this game. Yankees have three stolen bases. Cox into the windup. His pitch is inside ball one. Both bullpens are uh, heating up. Plenty of action. Two pitches in each bullpen. Don Nottabod, Joe Verbanek up for the Yankees. Robbie takes a pitch outside. Ball two, two and oh. They got a left-hander throwing easily in the center of the bullpen. Frank Bertana. The pitch is right down the middle. Strike call. Casey Cox is scheduled to be the fifth hitter next inning and uh, Ted Williams figures if they get some men on he'll pinch hit for the pitcher the 2-1 delivery strike two call two and two Robbie took two fast balls right down the pipe on deck Jake Gibbs The 2-2 pitch, a bouncer slowly hit the short. Brinkman will have to hurry up with it. Fires to first in time to get Robinson by his stride. Two away. And it brings up Gibbs. Jake, single to left in the second inning. Reached on an error in the fourth and bounced to second base in the sixth. Two out, nobody on. Yankees eight. Senators one, top of the eighth. The Mets open tomorrow against the new Montreal Expos at Shea Stadium. Jake takes a strike. Woo, a pitch missed everybody, hit the screen, one on one. At the end of three and a half innings now, it's the Dodgers three and the Cincinnati Reds two. Drysdale against Nolan. Pete Rose and Bob Tolan home it in the first inning for Cincinnati. The one-one delivery. Slow curve high, ball two, two and one. A reminder, don't forget the big welcome home luncheon for the Yankees at the Grand Ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria. On Monday, April the 14th, Joe Garagiola will be the MC. Mayor Lindsay will be there. Mike Burke, all the Yankees. And Ted Williams. And there's a base hit over third down the left field line. That'll be a double for Gibbs. 
And Jake rounds second and then holds on as Howard Stroh comes into third base. Beautiful throw by the big man. From the fence in deep left field, right to third on a fly. So Gibbs going to the opposite field. Doubles the second hit off Casey Cox. Been a lot of opposite field base hits in this game. And I think the hitters are getting a little smart now. They've been swinging for their toes for those home runs. And the averages have been dwindling. But now they're going with the pitch. And as you can see, each team has nine base hits. Here's Stottlemyre. Mel lined to left. Bunted into a force play and struck out. Two men are out. Gibbs at second. The pitch to Stottlemyre outside. Ball one. Horace Clark on deck. Again, the right hand already. Pitch is over. Strike called. Ready for the 1-1 pitch. Swing and a foul back upstairs out of play. And in the upper deck, had it dropped it, it went down below. Somebody gave President Nixon a glove, and uh, every once in a while he puts it on. He's been happy as a young boy watching this ball game, smiling, talking to everybody. Really having a picnic. All right, one and two on Mel. The pitch is low and outside. Evens the count of two and two. Jake Gibbs, good size lead off second base. They're not trying to hold him too close. Ready for the 2-2 two -two pitch. Foul back upstairs out of play. Mel just trying to chop at that ball. Yankees are going to have a real interesting team this year. They keep getting the good pitching with the speed they've got. Going to make a lot of teams worry. Again, the 2-2 pitch. Low and outside, it's a full count. Dick Hauser coaching at third. Elston Howard at first. Cox shakes off one sign. Now he's got the one he likes. Checks Gibbs at second. His pitch, low ball four. Stottlemyre works his way on with a base on balls. That's first walk given up by Casey Cox, and it brings up Horace Clark. Horace, one for four. He's fly to center twice, bounced to first, single to center, has driven in a run and scored a run. Stottlemyre putting on the jacket as the shadows start to creep across the field beautiful ballpark it's 335 down each line 378 in right center 381 in left center and 410 to straightaway center tremendous long scoreboard runs from the right field foul line almost out to center field runners at first and second two out pitch to Clark low ball one On deck, Jerry Kenny. Runners lead off first and second. Cox delivers, hits as bad as he tries to check. And right into the stands. And boy, I'd hit a kid right in the hands. Uh, he was just getting ready. It looked like to take a picture. Didn't have time, but he's lucky that it hit him in the hand. He's got a camera. Never hit the camera. That could have been dangerous had he had the camera up to his face because he's wearing glasses and now he's got the camera set right at the hitter. Shaking that left hand. The pitch is high ball two, two and one. Usher goes down to find out if he's all right. And he is. You got to be on your toes when you're sitting in those box seats down around the railing. It was accidental foul. 
Come back like a bullet. The 2 1 pitch, strike call, 2 and 2. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two men on. 8 to 1, the Yankees lead, top of the eighth. Bach digging in at the plate. Stretch by Cox. His pitch swing and a miss. He struck him out. And that's strikeout number three for Casey Cox. For the Yankees, no runs. One base hit, no errors, and two men left. And the score now at the end of seven and a half. The Yankees eight. The Senators one. You know, there's something fine going on at all participating Atlantic stations. And the response has been just great. We mean the fine China that participating Atlantic dealers now have available. This is fine china. You'll be proud to serve your guests or even use every, every day for your family. It's rugged enough to take heavy use, and its attractive pattern will bring out many compliments from guests on special occasions. Each four-piece place setting of cup, saucer, dinner plate, and bread and butter plate is yours for an exceptionally low price from participating Atlantic dealers. Now, this offer may vary in some states. But your chance to obtain beautiful dishes at an unbelievable low price remains the same. You can even charge your fine china on your Atlantic Richfield credit card. Fine china at a very fine low price. It's yours at participating Atlantic Station. So why don't you stop in today? We get ready for the bottom of the eighth inning, but before the eighth inning starts, right now, let's pause for station identification. Now the WHN weather word, fair and mild tonight. The low will be in the mid-40s. Tomorrow, fair and seasonable temperature. Right now, 67 degrees. WHN 1050, New York. Ken McMullen leads it off for Washington as they trail 8-1 to one here in the bottom of the eighth. McMullen 0 for 3, hit to the box, bounced to second and bounced to short. Come on, Mel Stoudemire has been in there all the way. His curve is over, strike call. On, Stoudemire rocks back, curve, bounced to third base, foul. Bobby Mercer up with it, throws to first. Would have been in plenty of time, but it's a foul ball. McMullen comes back. Fans are having a lot of fun at this game, and we want to remind you fans not to forget the big fun days at Yankee Stadium this season. There's Cap Day on May the 3rd, Ball Day on May 25th, and Bat Day on June 15th. Three real big fun days at the stadium. 0-2 on McMullen. Pitch is in there. Strike three called. McMullen caught looking. Stottlemyre picks up his fourth strike out of the ball game. And the batter, Tim Cullen. Cullen's two for three, bounce the third and the second, and then single to center in the fourth and sixth innings. Cullen takes a pitch low, ball one. Stottlemyre has had only two innings in where he's retired the Senators 1-2-3. That was the second inning and last inning the seventh. <clears throat> His pitch is lined to left field, a base hit. Cullen's third base hit of the ball game. He and Unser now have three hits apiece. And that's the tenth hit off Mel Stottlemyre. Here's Ed Brinkman who has two base hits. Struck out in the second, double a left in the fourth, singled to right center field in the sixth. Pepitone whistling to Stottlemyre, not holding Cullen too close to first base. Stretch by Stottlemyre. The pitch is low, ball one. He told you Unser has three base hits. Cullen has three base hits. Brinkman has two. And all three of those hitters choke well up on the bat. Just meeting that ball. The 1-0 pitch is a curve over strike call, one and one On deck, the catcher, Paul Casanova. Oh, 
Cullen leads away. Stottlemyre delivers. Ground ball hits slowly to second. Clock has to go to first base in time to get Brinkman moving to second base as Cullen. And that ball was hit right off the end of the bat. Had a lot of English on it. Was really twisting and squirming. But Clark stayed with it. Here's Casanova. 0 for 3. Hit to the box. Bounce to third. Foul to the catcher. Two out and Tim Cullen at second base. The Yankees leading 8-1. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Right hand hitting Paul Casanova. Stretch by Stottlemyre. The pitch is high inside ball one. On deck, Bernie Allen. Left hand hitting second baseman. Swing in the bat. Casey Cox is scheduled to be the next batter. Stottlemyre's next pitch is hit deep to left field. Way back and foul well over the fence. In left field, ball hit about 360 feet, but just foul, just missed hitting the foul pole as it went by it. A long strike, and it's one and one on Casanova. So Paul has to come back, do it all over again. Two men are out. Tim Cullen at second base. Stretch by Stottlemyre. Pitch swing and a miss at a high breaking pitch. A ball and two strikes. Now Mel looks in for the sign from Jake Gibbs. Here's the stretch. The pitch lined up the middle as a base hit. It's going to score a run. Cullen rounds third. He comes in to score. And it's an 8-2 ball game as Casanova drilled one up the middle. And the batter now, Bernie Allen. Pinch hitting for Casey Cox. Allen, the left-hand batter. 11 hits now for the Senators. Only two runs. Yankees have nine hits and eight runs. The stretch. The pitch right down the middle. Strike call. Frank Bertana, the left-hander, loosening up for the Senators. And Lindy McDaniel in the Yankee bullpen. Pitch is bounce foul. Nelly Fox to his left has it. 0 oh, and 2 the count. Nelly flips it to Pepitone, who fires it back to Stottlemyre. On deck, Del Unser. Casanova leads off first. The pitch is lined. A base hit to right field. Stopping at second base, Casanova. And that's the 12th hit for the Washington Senators. Bernie Allen coming through with a pinch hit single. And here's that dangerous man, Del Unser. Unser is single to center, double to left, and single to left. He's also bounced to second base. Little left-hand batter. 12 base hits. kind of games that Eddie Lopad used to pitch for the Yankees. A lot of base hits, very, very few runs. Stretch by Stottlemyre. The pitch bounced to the second base. Clock right there. Big hop. Flips to Pepitone in time. And the Senators in the bottom of the eighth pick up a run on three base hits. No Yankee errors. Two men left. And the score at the end of eight full innings. The Yankees eight and the Senators two. Well, the Yankees are making available to you fans official 1969 Yankee schedule. All you have to do to get them is write the ticket department, Yankee Stadium, Bronx, New York, for your free schedule to keep you appraised of Yankee doings at home and on the road throughout the season. And a new service for Yankee fans from Long Island. 
Express bus service will be available for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday games. Buses will leave two hours before game time from the Walt Whitman Shopping Center in South Huntington, the Mid-Island Plaza in Hicksville, and the Roosevelt Field Shopping Center in Garden City. And another reminder, the buses will leave the stadium one half hour after the game is completed. Well, we're going to have a new pitcher coming on for the Washington Senators. And for the Yankees, it'll be Jerry Kenny, Bob Mercer, and Roy White. The face who's ever coming in. Bernie Allen, who pinch hit, remains in the game at third base. And Dennis Higgins is coming in to do the pitching. Told you Frank Bettina had been doing most of the loosening up. And then Dennis Higgins got up and he's coming in. This is the fifth pitcher for Washington. Camilo Pasquale started. Bob Humphreys came on. Dick Bosman, Casey Cox, and now Dennis Higgins. So Jerry Kenny who has lined a center. Lined a home run over the right field fence. Popped to third and double a left field. Will lead it off. At the end of five innings, it's still the Dodgers three and the Reds two. Drysdale against Nolan. Pete Rose and Bobby Tolan homered in the first inning for Cincinnati. But then the Dodgers scored one in the second and two in the third. The Giants play Atlanta tonight. And uh, along with this game, the Yankees and the Senators... The only game scheduled for today. <clears throat> well, let's see what's happening here. President Nixon is standing up. I don't know whether he's leaving or not. Mr. Short is standing up, calling Mrs. Short over. They have seven children, the Shorts. And Mr. Short is the owner of the uh, Washington Senators. He's bringing his family over to meet President Nixon, and this will be a thrill. There they go, tracing over. The first pitch to Jerry Kenny is ball one from Dennis Higgins. Yankees lead 8 2, top of the ninth. The pitch is outside ball two. I'm informed it's traipsing over, not traipsing over. The 2-0 delivery. Line to center field. Right there is Unser, though. Sinks, and he makes the catch. Boy, that Kenny has hit the ball right on the button four times today. Four of the five times. The other time he popped a third and has two base hits to show, but he has been hitting the ball solidly. Here's Bobby Mercer's two for four. Bobby fly to center. Holman in the upper deck in right field. Single a right to drive in two more in the fourth. And struck out in the seventh. Strike one to Bobby. Roy White on deck. Higgins with the no wind up delivery. Swing and a miss at a fastball. Strike two. Higgins taking no time out on the mound. Rocks back. The pitch is high, ball one. One out, nobody on. We're in the ninth inning. Pitch by Higgins, a curve over, strike three called. Mercer is caught looking at a beautiful curveball. Sixth Yankee to get down on strikes in the ball game, and now Roy White. Roy Walk bounced a second, popped a second, and struck out. Yankees lead 8 2. Epitone on deck. Pitch by Higgins is low and outside, ball one.
Higgins rocks back. Kicks, delivers a foul just below it. One on one. Here's the windup. The pitch is low ball two, two and one. Two out, nobody on. Higgins ready. Low with the fastball is three and one. Casanova fires that ball back to his pitches. Got to be alert. Roy White choking up on the bat slightly. Batting left-handed against Dennis Higgins. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Foul over towards the center of the dugout. Full count. Elston Howard chasing it down. Good to see Ellie back in a Yankee uniform coaching at first. Dick Hauser, of course, the coach at third. Frank Rossetti, we'll see him when Seattle comes into town. And now the payoff pitch. Ground ball hit to short. Brinkman has it. Fires in time to get Roy White. So the Yankees are down in order here in the top of the ninth inning. And at the end of eight and a half innings, the Yankees eight, the Senators two. Well, there's a lot of big days this year, but April 14th is a big day for Yankee fans. It's the third annual welcome home luncheon held in honor of the Yankees by the Chamber of Commerce. The grand ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria is where it's at. And the entire Yankee team, including Michael Burke, Lee McPhail, and Ralph Hawk, will be on hand. Joe Garagiola will be the MC. Festivities begin at 12 noon, and the cost, $12.50 per person. And tables at 10 are available at $125. Now you can make the scene individually or as a group by contacting the Chamber of Commerce, 65 Liberty that's 65 Liberty Street, New York City, by mail or in person. Mayor John Lindsay will be on hand to roll out the welcome mat, and Ted Williams will be our special guest of honor that day. So we go into the bottom of the ninth. Stottlemyre has Ed Stroud, Frank Howard, and Mike Epstein to cope with. With the Yankees leading 8-2. to two. Lindy McDaniel continues to throw in the Yankee bullpen. And Frank Batena, the left-hander, in the center of the bullpen. Ed Stroud, one for four on the day. Bounced the second, fly to left, single to center, and then fly to left again. The pitch to Stroud, a curve inside ball one. All the cameramen... Popping out of the center of the dugout again, ready to uh, take pictures. Uh, President Nixon making his exit. There's a strike to Stroud, one and one. I know he still is, Sandy, but I, you weren't listening. I said they're getting ready to take his picture when he makes his exit. Bouncing ball in the hole, base hit to left field. That's the 13th hit by the Senator. And now Frank Howard. Getting kind of a rough treatment from the fans here. He's 0 for 4. Bounced to third, fly to right, struck out, and bounced to short. Meyer stretches, pitch to Howard, swing and a miss, strike one. This big fella doesn't have to swing hard to hit him out of the park. Gene Michael wanted to say something to Horace Clark. Horace ran over, got the words of wisdom, runs back. Stroud at first with nobody out in the bottom of the ninth, Yankees lead 8-2. Meyer sets. His pitch is low and away, one and one. Mike Epstein on deck. Here's the stretch. 
pitches hit deep to center. This one's gone. A line drive over the center field fence. Oh, holy cow, did he hit that one. He picked on a low sinker. That ball didn't get over 10 feet high all the way out. Kenny went back to the wall, couldn't reach it. It hit the center field wall, a line drive home run for the big man. And he has suddenly changed those boos to cheers, a standing ovation for big Frank Howard on as hard a home run ball as you'll ever see. A low line drive. That's the kind they talk about that Babe Ruth supposedly hit. A line drive went through the pitcher's legs, and by the time it stopped rising, it was over the fence. But that one could almost have done it. What a shot that was. Suddenly, it's an 8-4 to four ball game. 14 hits now. The batter, Mike Epstein, who is one for three, a walk and a single. Foul down the third baseline, one and one. Just was saying before how it hit that one. He doesn't have to swing hard to hit him out of here. And he golfed a low sinker. I'm telling you, you don't see him hit any harder than that. 8-4, the Yankees lead. Nobody out here in the bottom of the ninth. Stottlemyre's pitch, bouncing ball in the hole. Peppertone one-hands it. Throws to Stottlemyre in time on a good play by Peppertone and Stottlemyre as they take a base hit away from Mike Epstein. Man, if that one had gone through, I'm afraid that might have been all for Mel Stottlemyre. And now we're going to have a pinch hitter for the pitcher, Dennis Higgins. Looks like Hank Allen coming up. Hank Allen batting for Dennis Higgins. Hank had himself a fine spring. As a matter of fact, Hank caught the ball that President Nixon threw out. The first one that he threw out. He eventually threw out two more. There's a pitch low, ball one. Hank, a right-hand batter, like his brother, Richie Allen of the Phils. He's bigger and stronger than his brother, Richie, but he doesn't hit like his brother. Bouncing ball to second. Clock hits the big hop. Throws to first in time, and it's two away. Two out, nobody on the batter, Tim Cullen, who is three for four. He bounced the third in the second inning, then had three straight singles his next three times up. Twice to center, one to left. The pitch is strike one to Tim Cullen. Stottlemyre's next pitch is low, one and one two out nobody on eight to four the Yankees lead well I tell you these senator fans shouldn't be too disappointed even though they're trailing eight to four foul back one ball two strikes their team has come up with 14 base hits that's an indication that uh, they've learned something from Ted Williams and if they hit like this all year they're going to win a lot of ball games and by the same token the Yankee fans should take heart Making their hits count. Curve is low. Evens the count of two and two. You get nine hits and eight runs. You're really hitting in the clutch. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Pitch by Stottlemyre. Just outside. Man, that was close. I don't know how he laid off that one. Full count, three and two. Full count on Tim Cullen. Here's the payoff pitch. Low, ball four. Stottlemyre gives up only his second walk of the ball game. His first walk was in the first inning to Mike Epstein. And this is only the second man he's walked. And Mel is very fortunate that he uh, did not walk too many with all the base hits that he has allowed. Here's Eddie Brinkman, who's two for four. A single and a double. He's also struck out and bounced to second. Stottlemyre's pitch, low, ball one. On deck, Paul Casanova. Now oh! Stottlemyre really struggling in this ball game. He sets. His pitch is over, strike called, one and one. Now 
Mel ready again. Delivers low and away. Nice play by Jake Gibbs. Saved a wild pitch. Two balls and a strike. Now it looks like Mel is forcing his pitches a little bit. Remember, this is the first time he, uh, well, he did pitch in a B-squad game. I think it went nine innings. But uh, he only threw 110 pitches. He's thrown many more than that today. There's a pitch low. Ball three. Three and one. Adelmeyer would like to stay in and get a complete game. Ralph Hawk would like to see him stay in and get a complete game, but anything can happen in a ball game. The key man for Stottlemyre, the 3-1 delivery. Right down the middle, strike two. Three and two, two out. Cullen will be off and running, and we'll have the payoff pitch coming up, Teddy Brinkman. All right, Mel looks in for the sign. Here's the stretch. The runner goes. The pitch is hit deep to left center field. Roy White back there. He's there. Makes the catch. And that ends the ball game. But the Senators pick up two runs on two hits. No Yankee errors. A man left. And the final score of the game, the Yankees eight, the Senators four. Here are the totals for the Yankees. Eight runs on just nine hits. No errors. For Washington, four runs, 14 hits. Two errors. Mel Stottlemyre, the winning pitcher, he's 1 0 on the year. This is his third straight opening day win. Camilo Pasqual, the loser. Camilo 0 1, naturally. Well, the Yankees, in the second inning, a walk to Roy White. Two stolen bases by Roy White, by the way. Stole second and third. Scored on Tommy Tresh's single. Bill Robinson then bounced into a fourth play. Stole second and scored on a single by Jake Gibbs. They scored two more in the third. On back-to-back -back homers by Jerry Kenny and Bobby Mercer. Scored four times in the fourth inning with the help of two errors. And a single by Mercer to drive in two more runs was a big blow, and that was all the scoring for the Yankees. The Senators picked up one in the fifth, one in the eighth, and then two on the uh, line drive home run by big Frank Howard. So, once again, the final score, the Yankees eight and the Senators four. Now this is Phil Rizzuto speaking for Jerry Coleman and Frank Messer saying so long from Robert F. Kennedy Stadium in Washington, D.C. Today's Yankee broadcast has been brought to you from Washington, D.C. by Peel Brothers, Brooklyn, New York, who say thank you very much for trying our Peel's Real Draft Beer. And by Atlantic Richfield Company and your local Atlantic dealer. Drive in where you see the red ball sign, the sign of service. Fill up with Atlantic Imperial and keep on the go. And by First National City Bank, the only bank your family ever needs. Now our next Yankee broadcast will see the Yankees meeting these same Washington Senators Wednesday night, airtime 7.25 p.m. We hope you'll join us then for more New York Yankee baseball. Right now, stay tuned for Marv Albert and the scoreboard on WHN 1050 New York. WHN 1050 New York for Worldwide Mutual News. And these are the headlines. Secretary of State Rogers told his first news conference today that the Nixon administration does have a peace plan for Vietnam, but Rogers did not disclose what it might be. Meantime, Secretary of Defense Laird warns that the Soviets are testing a new triple warhead on the new SS-9 rocket. The Supreme Court has downed the New York legislature's reapportionment plan. Democrat Hugh Carey of Brooklyn has become a Democratic candidate for mayor. And the so-called field marshal of the Black Panthers denied a plot today that it planned to bomb a number of department stores and other targets in the city last week. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrials average closed down 8.52. The weather word, sunny, quite mild this afternoon. Fair mild tonight for the low in the middle 40s. Right now, it's 67 degrees at 427. Stay tuned now for Marv Albert on the scoreboard. Thank you, John, and good afternoon, everyone. This is Marv Albert at the scoreboard, brought to you by Suppose Socks and the Pontiac dealers of New York, Westchester and Long Island. Visit the one nearest you for a good deal on a great car that is Pontiac. 
And this afternoon in Washington, good day for the Yanks, despite a shaky performance by Mel Stoudemire, really had to struggle, but uh, most of the day went right, as uh, most of the hopes of the Grapefruit League became reality in game number one. Of course, the opposition was not exactly the true test, but uh, Mr. Houck will take it. The Senators figure to have one of their longer seasons, and they've had some long ones. 8-4, the final, a game that saw the much-advertised Yankee speed put to use, a game that saw the two big hopes, Jerry Kenny and Bobby Mercer, come through, a game that saw heavy hitting by both ball clubs, and a game that saw a so-so performance by Mel Stottlemyre, but good enough, although he gave up uh, the four runs on 14 base hits. This, the presidential opener with uh, President Richard Nixon on hand to fire out that first ball, get things going, and uh, Mr. Nixon performed the ritual, which has been conducted by every president since William Howard Taft started it back in 1910. Ted Williams was invited to the president's box to supervise, and here's how it went, as described by Jerry Coleman. And now Ted Williams is up to join President Nixon, and he's about ready. And there it goes into the middle of the pack, and it's on the ground, a real scramble. Who's got it? It looks like Hank Allen is the one who comes up for that. So, despite the efforts of Fritz Peterson, who came prepared with uh, a fishnet, Hank Allen came up with the baseball, and that was the only Washington Senator success of the afternoon. Here's the recap. In the second, the Yankees moved in front to stay with two runs, stolen bases by uh, Roy White and Bill Robinson, helping matters. In fact, White stole two RBI singles by Tresh and Gibbs. And then in the third, with one out, the batter was Jerry Kenny facing Camilo Pasquale, who was uh, hanging that large-sized curveball of his. The 1-0 pitch to Kenny. Hit hard to right field. I mean real hard. Way back there. It's gone. <laughs> Jerry Kenny comes up with a first Yankee home run of 1969. And he hit that. Hoo-wee. And for Jerry, his second Major League home run and a very nice way to start things out. Then the number three hitter, Bobby Mercer. And once again, here's Jerry Coleman. Mercer hits a high fly to right field. This could go if it's fair. It's way back there, and it is a home run. Bobby Mercer into the upper deck. And for Mercer, his second big league home run that gave the Yanks a 4-0 lead. Four more in the fourth, made it 8-0, and that proved to be the big inning as the Senators bounced back uh, in the eighth and ninth innings. Two Washington errors and a wild pitch by Dick Bosman helped the Yankee cause in the fourth. So it was 8 nothing. The Senators scored a run in the fifth. Singles by Unser, Stroud, and Epstein. Unser, a tough man to get out throughout the day, had three hits along with Tim Cullen, who had three. The Senators with another run in the eighth inning, an RBI single by Casanova, and a two-run shot in the ninth off the bat of Frank Howard made it 8-4. to four. Tremendous drive by Big Frank over the center field wall, but that was the story as Stottlemyre uh, finishes of the ball game, had his problems in the eighth and ninth, had his problems actually throughout, allowing the four runs on 14 hits. But Mel comes up with the complete game and his third straight opening day victory. The Yanks had eight runs, nine hits, and no errors. Senators four, 14, and two. Stoudemire now one and oh. Pasquale is nothing and one. He was followed by Humphreys in the third, Bosman in the fourth, Cox in the seventh, and Higgins in the ninth. The home runs, Kenny, third inning, nobody on. Mercer, in the third with nobody on Howard in the ninth with one man on. So that is the story on the Yankees right here on WHN 1050 in New York. And we'll check out the rest of the baseball in just a moment. Well, quite a ball game and quite a day. And what a pleasure it is to wear Suppo socks. Now, this is the sock that more and more younger men are wearing because Suppo's help keep a young man feeling great, help him feel healthy, help him feel ready to go. Of course, Lots of other men wear famous suppos for another reason. They're the men who have active jobs where they're on their feet a lot. And they find that patented suppos really help ease tired legs like no other support sock in the world. Suppos has a special patented two-way knit that does the trick gently and handsomely. Suppos look handsome, too. They're an over-the-calf sock, so come on in and uh, drop by and pick up your pair of Suppo socks. Uh, they come in a big range of colors for sports or dress-up wear. Go ahead, try a pair and try regular Suppos at $4.95. You'll find them at better stores all over town. And just remember, it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are or what work you do. You'll feel better in Suppos all the time. 
Now the rest of the baseball, two other games, both in the National League this afternoon at Cincinnati in the other traditional opener. They are now in the bottom of the sixth inning, the Reds at bat, and the Dodgers lead the Reds by the score of 3-2. to two. It's Don Drysdale against Gary Nolan. Two Cincinnati home runs in the first inning. Pete Rose with nobody on, Bob Tolan with nobody on. They open this one up with Ohio Governor James Rhodes throwing what is described by the wire services as a high inside slow ball to Cincinnati Mayor Eugene Ruhlman. Sixth inning, Reds batting, Dodgers lead it by the score of 3-2. to two. Tonight, the Giants against uh, the Braves at Atlanta. The scheduled pitchers will be Juan Marichal and Pat Jarvis. Everyone else opens up tomorrow. Four games in each league, including the Mets and the Montreal Expos at Shea. One other baseball note, Mickey Mantle has signed a one-year contract with NBC TV to assist on the pregame show, which precedes the game of the week every Saturday afternoon. Mickey will join his former teammate Tony Kubek on the pregame. He will not appear on every show, but will make frequent appearances during the course of the season. He'll begin this Saturday on the first telecast. So Mr. Mantle has joined uh, the broadcasting business. That's the baseball. We'll have the rest of the sports news, including a look at the NBA draft right after this from Pontiac. Hi, you must be the sound man I sent for. That's right, Sammy the Sound Man, inventor of the greatest sounds ever heard. Strange sounds, wild sounds, ugly sounds, musical sounds, harsh sounds, sweet sounds, and the quietest sound in the world. And, and what's the quietest sound in the world? A mouse backing into a powder puff. Oh, well, that, that's fine, I, I see. <laughs> you see, I, I, I represent the local Pontiac dealers. And we don't want to yell and scream about the great deals we have to offer, but we want a sound that when people hear it, they'll think about the great deals at their Pontiac deal. Mm, let's see. Oh, I got it. Sorry, no, what's, what's that? Well, I'm uh, humming a song by Johann Sebastian Bach. So anytime anybody hears somebody humming Johann Sebastian Bach, they'll think, think of their local Pontiac, Pontiac dealer. dealer. I yeah. see. I'm not so sure I like a, a humming Bach. How about a red-winged blackbird? Now the rest of the news and the big story just in right from the hands of uh, John Lewin in the NBA draft. They are conducting the college draft by phone for the first two rounds. And the New York Knicks have come up with uh, quite a pick. They need a backcourt man. And they uh, come up with John Warren of St. John's in the second round, Bill Bunton of North Carolina. John Warren selected by the New York Knicks. They did not expect to get him. Phoenix uh, picking second. Actually, the first pick was made by the Milwaukee Bucks a couple of weeks ago, and they have uh, Lou Alcindor all signed and sealed. So Phoenix with the second choice goes for big Neil Walk. The Celtics get JoJo White of Kansas. Seattle picks up Lucius Allen of UCLA. The Detroit Pistons went for Terry Driscoll of Boston College. The Chicago Bulls get Larry Cannon out of LaSalle. San Diego went for Bob Smith of Tulsa. San Francisco, Bob Portman of Creighton. Cincinnati for Herman Gilliam of Purdue. Butch Beard of Louisville taken by the Atlanta Hawks. And the Philadelphia 76ers went for Bud Ogden of Santa Clara. Two more selections just in. The Lakers get Willie McCarter of uh, Drake. And the Baltimore Bullets get Mike Davis of Virginia Union. So once again, Phoenix picking second goes for Neil Walk. The New York Knicks in the first two rounds. Uh, the rounds being conducted by telephone. John Warren of St. John's. Bill Bunton of North Carolina. <laughs> 